Welcome, and I am calling to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on Thursday, May 26, 2022. I am Select Board Chair Lynn Diggins, and I will now confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in affirmative. Sam Han? Yes. John Hurd? Yes. Steve Zacorsi? Yes. Eric Helmets? Yes. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in affirmative. Adam Chapdelaine? Yes. Doug Heim? Yes. And Board Administrator Ashley Marr is participating but not as a panelist. Tonight's meeting of the Arlington Select Board is being conducted remotely consistent with an act signed into law on February 15, 2022 that extends certain COVID-19 measures. The act includes an extension until July 15, 2022 of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. The governor's order, which is on the town's website and referenced with agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely as long as there is a reasonable public access that allows the public to follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Before we begin, please note the following. First, this meeting is being conducted via Zoom, it is being recorded, and it's also being simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Second, persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons participating by Zoom are reminded that they may be visible to others, and if you want, wish to participate, you are asked to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Third, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment, and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials also found on Tom's website using the Novus agenda, excuse me, the Novus agenda platform. And finally, each vote tonight will be taken by roll call. We have a lot to cover tonight, including the executive session, but before we do so, let me take a moment to acknowledge the passing of Elsie Fuiori, who lived in East Arlington and was a town meeting member for 56 years. There's an excellent article, article about her on the Year Arlington website. I also feel compelled to acknowledge the terrible event in Texas a couple of days ago. I really don't know what else to say that hasn't been said. I almost always avoid speaking on behalf of my colleagues, but I'll make an exception tonight by saying that I know that we're all willing to listen to you and to hear how you feel about recent events. We try to find solutions on the local level, but we know that the national global events often have profound effects on us. At a minimum, let us try to cut each other some extra slack in our day-to-day -day interactions. If we can lighten the load and prevent or reduce stress in some way, even if it's just a little bit, let's try to do it. It may make a bigger difference than we realize. So with that, we will turn to the second item on the agenda, which is the third quarter financial report um, with um, Mr. Puller and, and Ms. Cody. And so since we're also very good at doing our reading, our homework, I've asked that maybe we try to keep the presentations made to a minimum so that we can just ask as many questions as we want and maybe um, get through things a little bit faster. So. Um, with that, Mr. Um, Puller, Mr. Cody. If you're Cody, talking. Hey. Okay, Ms. Cody, I hear Cody. you. I'm not hearing Mr. Puller. Oh, Ms. Cody will make okay. the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Ms. Cody. Good evening. Ida Cody, town controller. Mr. Diggings, I cannot notice by I cannot help it by notice that you're wearing the tie with my Romanian flag colors. So this makes me feel like home. Oh. That is my flag, yes. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, you're muted, so we see your smiling face, but not oh. your words. Okay, Great. thank you, that's it. I'm happy, that's the case, thank you. Great, thank you. Um, thank you for having me here tonight. Um, I will present the year-to-date budget report for the third quarter of the fiscal year um, 22. Um, uh, this report covers nine months um, from July 1st, 2021 through March 20, 31st, 2022. Um, both expenses should be at 75% for this time of the year, and for the most part, they are. Um, like you say, I'm gonna, I said, I'm gonna try to stay brief. Um, I know that you are familiar with the report. Um, I'm just gonna say that it has three parts. The first part is a narrative part where we explain 
the variances from the, that they are greater than 75% from the projection. Then the second part is a high level summary where we present the um, total expenditures by department, total revenues by category. Also separately, we present the articles and the enterprise funds for both revenue and expenditure. Um, and third, uh, we have the Munis report, which has all the details if you're interested in knowing more about um, whatever is behind these numbers. So I'm gonna jump into the um, summary table. Um, can we have it on, do we have it on the screen? Would you mind sharing it? Yep, I can do that right now. All right. So what I did, I just highlighted the, the departments that um, I thought I should highlight. And then um, if you have any questions, you can let me know. I'll wait for. Sorry about that. There you go. So Adam, okay. if you can go to the, if you can jump to this uh, table that's on page three or four. So the first um, department there is the select board is um, below 75% is only at 66% and that's because we had a vacancy all year. The next one is the FinCom. Uh, FinCom is only at 57%, but that's because, because the board members get paid the stipend at the end of June, at the end of the fiscal year. Um, Controllers, my department is low as well, but that's because we budgeted um, initially the senior staff, um, but my assistant um, retired. So we had a promotion from within and we also hired a new person and both people are at a lower salary. The next um, department is a treasure collector is at 50% and that is because they had um, roughly around four vacancies throughout the year. Um, personnel is only at 69, um, but the, the salary is at, is at 75%, it's just the expenses, um, it's a timing issue. They haven't encumbered all the funds yet. Um, town clerk is at 65, and again, the same day, this doesn't capture the expenses that we had uh, at the April election and also the town meeting. Election department is 13%, but do not worry, we'll spend it all and we'll probably be a little over after this town meeting and um, after, um, I mean, the April election was posted, but it's not reflected in this report. Uh, planning is at 67% because they've had four vacancies um, for a short period of time. Um, redevelopment board is just a timing issue. Uh, now they've spent more funds and they're right where they're supposed to be. Parking ticket, uh, parking is the same thing. They had a vacancy. Um, inspection uh, department is at 57%. That's because there's a difference um, in the director's pay. The uh, previous director was paid $600 more than the current director. And they also had a vacancy. Um, public works is at 84. It's a little high, but if you see there, they have encumbered a lot of funds. They usually encumbered um, the contracted services at the beginning of the fiscal year. Health department is really high, it's at 96%, but they have included in this, there's about $200,000 in CARES and ARPA funds, which we have reclassed since, and now they're in a good shape. Um, diversity, equity, and inclusion, they're at 49%, but that's because they didn't spend the consulting money that they had. Um, but I spoke with them and they've actually, uh, they will be pulling a purchase order this month in about a, in the amount of, a, of around $26,000. Um, and that this concludes the general fund expenses, the operating expenses. I will move to the other expenses and there's really not much to add here. We just have the transfers which um, occur a, a little up. The, the transfers, um, occur at the beginning of the fiscal year, and on, I usually post them on July 1st. Then I have the uh, the debt is at 92%, but it, that's actually spent now. We only have 22 cents. We paid all the debt uh, for this, this year, I mean. And the pensions, um, same thing, we're paying them in July, so they're 100%. Next, I have the, um, the articles. 
And um, same thing, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on the one articles. If you wanna move down a little, Adam. Um, I'm just gonna say that the articles are on a two year cycle. In other words, we give this, the department um, the budget and we give them, uh, we allow them um, to spend them over a two year period. Um, because of COVID, some of the expenditures were delayed. I also touched base with the department and I've adjusted the, um, the budget since. I either turned back whatever it wasn't needed and we couldn't spend it. I turned it back to the free cash and some other funds were either encumbered or spent. Um, the, only, uh, the only one I'm gonna highlight is the reclassification. That's at 100%. Um, that is all spent, but we're not spending it from here. We, this is the money that we set aside for a, a job reclassifications. And what we do, we just move the budget and the money are being spent from the respective budget. And that's all I have on the expense side. And I will move on to the revenue. Um, revenue, there are variances on the revenue, but uh, just like in the expenses, they're all good variances. The transfers all um, show 100% because I post them all in the beginning of the fiscal year. Um, taxes are right where they are at 75%. Um, the excise, um, motor vehicle excise tax is at 115%. That is because um, this is one of the revenues that we had to lower by approximately a million dollars. So, um, but um, we had to do that to, to account for the impact on the, um, of COVID on the auto industry. But now it looks like we're coming back and I've actually looked um, at, the, um, at the accounts right before the meeting and we're $820,000 over as of right now, over meaning to the good. Um, the next one um, I would highlight is the fees, and we are at 107%. This is mostly coming from the ambulance fees, the street openings fees. There was a lot of um, uh, markups at the DPW for the utilities company and companies, and also um, the clerk, the town clerk. Um, they had a big payment in March, which bumped the, their projection. In, about, in the amount of roughly $19,000, it was for a, an environmental um, design review. License and permits, the same thing, the, the building, it's mostly from the building permits and the wire permits in the inspections department. Um, the school, that's for the Medicaid uh, reimbursement and the school has been aggressive with the uh, Medicaid billing. They've hired a company, P, uh, PCG Public Consulting Group um, to send the billing and they had a good um, collection. Um, pilot, um, it was a um, um, conservative uh, estimate of $18,000, but the assessor actually uh, billed two uh, not-for-profit um, agencies in the amount of 23,000, the total is 25,526 and we've already collected the payment from one 23,000 we're just waiting for the other one, the $2,500. Hotel tax and meal tax, um, they're high because we lowered it. Um, same thing to impact, to account for the COVID impact. And then marijuana is a 109. And I'm going to pause here because Ms. Mahan requested some details on the marijuana revenues. Um, just wanted to let you know that we have two revenue streams on the marijuana. We have the application fees, and we also have the excise that comes quarterly on the cherry sheet. Um, it's a wire from the state. Um, the application fees, we had the apothca, uh, the, uh, I believe that's the, there was the impact fee of $100,000. We received that money in 2019, and that already closed to the, to the free cash. Then in 2020, we had four applications in the amount of $250, so that's $1,000. In 2021, we had two applications, each of 250, so that makes it 500. And then this year, this fiscal year, we only had one application of $250. These are going in a separate account. And we also have an excise account, which is the one that you see here um, that says marijuana 
ta uh, tax. Um, this year we received uh, 264.79 and we only posted three quarters. So um, this is gonna look really good by the end of June. In fiscal year 21, we received in excise 158.127 in marijuana. Um, the, the interest um, is at 51% only because as you know, the interest rates have plummeted um, and we actually do have all the interest posted through March 31st. So it is what it is. Ida, maybe yes. we can wrap up a, a, a soon. I, I know the select board has a lot on its agenda. Okay, just, just the fines, uh, the moving violations has picked up and um, uh, yeah, we're at 86%. Um, I'll move on to the enterprise funds. Uh, the enterprise funds are right where they are, where they're supposed to be. Um, the water and sewer, uh, the, the expenses is at 79%, but that's because we posted the indirect at the beginning of the fiscal year. Um, uh, the revenue is a little behind, it's a 73, but the, the water uh, sewer bills were due yesterday. So we're gonna see good collections in May and June. Um, the AYCC um, is um, uh, uh, collecting, both revenue and collections have increased because of the increased services. COA is a little low in the 66%, but that's because we had the construction of the central school and uh, they also ran some expenses through the donations. They had a lot of donations. Um, the, the rink and the recreation, um, they're in good shape. They've seen a lot of increases in programs and um, uh, there are still entries to be posted. At the time I printed this report, we didn't finish all the credit cards um, adjustments. So, but they're both in good shape. And that's it. If you have any questions or, or Cindy, if you have anything to add. Mr. Chairman, I think, think if there are any questions from the members, we'd be glad to answer them. Otherwise, I think that's our presentation. Okay. Well, thank you very much. So uh, I'm gonna go down the line on this one um, using uh, first names in alphabetical order. It, uh, some of the, on some issues, we'll, we'll just, take hands up. Uh, so uh, Ms. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and, uh, thank you, Ms. Cody and Mr. Poor. Um, <clears throat> um, the first three points quickly, <clears throat> excuse me, the first two are just, um, <clears throat> I all of a sudden have a tickle in my throat, I'm sorry. Um, just directed to the town manager, um, the deputy town manager, just sort of as a pointing out point. Um, I know Ms. Cody spoke about the Council on Aging and, you know, because of the construction, et cetera, um, it, it goes without saying that we anticipate that number as well as the outreach is getting back out, up the, the community centers up and running. So we anticipate that number will go back up again. And they're nodding yes. Okay. And then the second one, if I say anything that I shouldn't be saying, the town council could stop me um, under collective bargaining. I know that the chairman of finance committee reported at town meeting that there's discussions and he hopes that um, there'll be something to report within the current regular um, town meeting. And um, if it's appropriate, I just, you know, um, if that's something that you, Mr. Chapterline, Adam, um, before June 17th, could possibly um, nailed on, down, and I know you're trying. I'm not saying you're not, and it may come that that doesn't come to pass. But so I understand why, why that's zero, right? It's zero right now because we haven't settled with all the unions. Is that correct? Um, that is correct. We went to the finance committee last night to get its approval of our contracts with the fire union, with Ask Me, which ratified their vote in, a, in town hall on Wednesday, with the librarians, and with um, and then we went forward with making salary changes, COLA changes for our non-union staff too, and management staff and our elected officials. We are in arbitration with the patrol union uh, and we uh, have not had discussions, active discussions with the superior officers. I think they are waiting to see what the patrol union 
comes up with. Um, and uh, SEIU also has a contract that's in place this year uh, and we need to uh, conduct negotiations with them for next year. Thank you. So you and will then, see that card me come up at, ne uh, at next Wednesday's town meeting for ratification of those contracts I just mentioned. Thank you. I appreciate that. And then um, last one is just a question. I know it's brand new that our veteran service director has established, but I've seen, I think, at least two um, obituary memoriams um, asking people to donate to, to, to the town's veterans fund. As that money comes in, is that a separate line item or does that go somewhere just under general general fund? Typically all the money that comes to the town should be general fund, but I'm not sure I know exactly which donations you're talking about. So I might have to look into it. Um, yeah, okay. So if someone could check with Mr. Chungwell, because I know I'm going by memory, but I know he established he wanted to have a separate like line item. I don't know. I don't think it was an enterprise fund, but something that if people wanted to donate to the Arlington Veterans Fund, I've seen it twice now because I made one donation to it. So whatever way that can be tracked separately that Mr. Pooler and or Ms. Cody think is appropriate, just because I think Mr. Chungo also stated that part of the monies, if not all of them, would go to I don't know if it was the Arlington Center Memorial or something like that. So I don't, I don't anticipate seeing on that now, but I know it's, it's starting to be noticed that if you want it in lieu of flowers sort of thing. And those are my three questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to move receipt. Thank you, Ms. Mahan. And, and um, next, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I second the motion for receipt. I appreciate the diligent detailed report. I have no questions. Thanks, Mr. Helmuth. Next, Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and I appreciate the presentation. I don't recall when we started doing these, but they are very helpful to get periodic up updates of what's happened with the budget. And I always feel like I'm, I should be asking questions, but it's so detailed that it really, it not only gives us the numbers, it explains any of the discrepancies. So I do appreciate that. And I appreciate the time that you both take to give us the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Mr. Corsi. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, I also want to thank Ms. Cody and, and uh, Mr. Pooler for the thorough presentation. Just a very brief comment. Happy to see that local receipts are as strong as they are, and, and uh, particularly the building permit fees. And hopefully that bodes well for new growth in fiscal 24 um, as, as these projects are built and more value is created. So thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Corsi, and and I mean I, I, I share my the appreciation of my colleagues I mean, for a, a, a great report. And as Mr. Hurd said, I mean uh, uh, you explained some things so well I me mean, that they really I mean, I mean, most of my questions are just curiosity questions, and I'm going to save those for the fourth quarter report, assuming we have a less heavy agenda on that meeting. So uh, on a motion to uh, receive um, by Mrs. Bahan and a second by Mr. Mr. Helmuth, um, Mr. Fine. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. Diggins. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Thank you, everybody. And so thank you. third on the agenda is uh, for approval, the LGBTQ IA Rainbow Commission Pride Proclamation. So uh, with us tonight will be Mr. Rubinson and Ms. Krinsky, the Rainbow Commission. Mr. Chairman, I don't see either of those names, but I do see Susan Ryan Volmer. Okay, all right. So then, then we'll have Susan. And maybe, maybe Ms. Ryan Volmer told me that she was gonna be the one here. I knew that she was gonna speak at some point, but I thought she might be brought in by the co-chairs, you know. Hello, Ms. Ryan Rollner. Hi. Hi. Uh, sorry for the confusion. Um, Lisa Krinsky isn't able to be here tonight. Um, she's, um, and Andy is our immediate past co-chair of the commission. Um, and I uh, succeeded Andy in that position, so. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. And, and I'm just reading what's here. We, uh, you would think we having attended the meetings, we, 
I remember these things, but sometimes I'm just reading what's in front of me just because that's safer. Uh, so, so, uh, so as we talked, I, I, I'm not going to go through the entire proclamation tonight. I, I'm going to save that me for for the 12th, where I, I can do it in person. And I have a hat that matches this tie that I'm going to wear. It's like a cat in a hat, top hat, you know. And so I'll wear that. I, and and uh, but we do want to point out a new element I, to the proclamation. And so um, please take it away. Sure. Um, in past years, the uh, proclamation has highlighted the close partnerships that the Rainbow Commission enjoys with the Human Rights Commission and the Disability Commission. Um, but this year, for the first time, we're highlighting the very close working relationships that we've developed with the town's Office of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and the town's police department. And we thought it might be meaningful if we explained why we did this. So I just want to share a brief story. Um, uh, since 2020, trust me, it's brief, even though I say 2020, um, the Rainbow Commission, we've worked quite closely with Director Jill Harvey of the Office of DEI. And during the same period, we've also worked very closely with um, the APD through Chief Julie Flaherty. Um, and usually when we talk about, you know, close working relationships, we use phrases like collaborative partnerships, creating trust, and it's very squishy. And what does it actually mean? So, um, I want to tell you one story that shows in a concrete way what can come about from these kind of uh, close partnerships. In 2020, Chief Flaherty asked the Rainbow Commission to review the department's policy on interacting with transgender individuals. Um, with Chief Flaherty's permission, we shared the policy with two national experts in criminal legal matters relating to LGBTQIA plus people. They reviewed the policy. They said, as these things go, it, the policy was pretty good, but they offered a bunch of suggestions, all of which Chief Flaherty accepted. And last March, we invited Lieutenant Greg Flavin to come to our meeting and just share with the commission um, how the new policy was implemented and um, whether or not it's making any difference. So he explained how the new policy was presented to APD. Um, he described the training that uh, the force received. And then he shared quite a few stories about the impact of the new policy in the field, one of which I want to share with you. Um, there was an instance in which APD responded to a call involving a resident who's transgender. And this, um, the, the call was related to th this individual was in crisis. Um, and as an aside, I should emphasize, say that Lieutenant Flavin emphasized to us that nothing makes him happier than a boring shift. He does not like it when things get interesting. Um, so to that end on this call, the officers knew when they came to this individual whose physical appearance and presentation didn't match their official sex information on their driver's license, not to make a big deal out of it. They simply asked the individual how they wanted to be dressed, what name should they use, um, and for the purposes of filling out a form, what pronoun should they use. And in this particular instance, there were other first responders at the scene from outside jurisdictions who didn't have um, the training that APD had on how to interact with transgender individuals. And these responders consistently misgendered the in individual, which escalated the situation. So APD responders were now in a position not just of dealing with the individual, but also having to mitigate the problems that were being caused by other folks, um, you know, who were causing the situation to escalate. And in the end, the officers de-escalated the situation, largely by treating the individual with respect, which is what everyone deserves. Um, this might not sound like a big deal. It's a very big deal for residents who are transgender. Um, in Massachusetts, a 2015 survey found that over half of people who are transgender or gender diverse have um, are mistreated by law enforcement and also, surprisingly, by um, healthcare clinicians. Those are the two groups that are the worst. Um, so, just as a result of this, you know, the squishy creating trust, building community, it resulted in something concrete and tangible for somebody who lives in town. So. Thank you, Mr. Ryan Vollmer. I, mean, I like the way you ended that, the squishy, you know, and the, the concrete. That's very, very, very nice. You know, so um, help me out, Mrs. Mahan. You know, when it comes to um, the proclamations, I mean, do we take a motion on this? And does that happen before or after reading part of the proclamation? Just historically, when it's on the agenda, we um, <clears throat> take a vote and move approval. Okay. 
before or after reading? Um, either, chair's discretion, so. Okay, great. I mean, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read the last two whereas's, and like I said, when we, or when we were at the event, I mean, we're gonna have fun with this because I mean, my understanding is that uh, we can really have a, uh, we can do things with the whereas with the crowd. So, so, um, so and I'm gonna do the last two because the, pen, the second um, to the last one um, points out what you just said, Ms. Ryan Walmer. So, whereas the LBG to, LGBTQIA plus community in Arlington is resilient, creative and innovative and enjoys strong allied partnerships with the town's Human Rights Commission, Disability Commission, Council on Aging, Council for Arts and Culture, Office of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion, Police Department and numerous other groups, residents and elected officials that support the LGBTQIA plus Rainbow Commission's work to bring greater visibility and empowerment to the LGBTQIA plus population through education advocacy and collaboration with other town agencies, schools and communities and community groups and whereas celebrating LGBTQIA plus Pride Month in part by displaying Rainbow Commission flags in Arlington Center and issuing this proclamation are outward representations of the town's commitment to full inclusion of the LGBTQIA plus community in Arlington civic light, life now. Therefore, be it resolved that we, the members of the select board, reaffirm our support for equal protections for LGBTQIA plus residents of Arlington, be it further resolved that we designate June 22 as LGBTQIA plus Pride Month in Arlington. So with that, I now go to Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I proudly move approval. Thank you, Ms. Ryan Vollmer, for sharing the story and the news of the additions um, to, to the um, collaborations and the proclamation. I think it's really wonderful to, to observe that and really important to point out that the town of Arlington doesn't just talk the talk, but it walks the walk. And I think that story and the outreach that our chief of police did to develop policies and training is what made that, that situation so much better when it, when it came up. Um, I'm glad to know that we're, we're acknowledging the longstanding collaboration with Director Harvey in the DEI uh, division because truly she and her and her colleagues there do so much with you and, and you do as well. Um, so it is a lot to be proud of. And you know, this is the difficult time for everyone in our nation for a lot of reasons. And one of those is that we are seeing a continued resurgence of intolerance and hate. Uh, based on just who people are. And it seems to be harder and harder for some folks to just let people be who they are and, and trust them to know who they are. And I'm really pleased that we have such good efforts by you and your colleagues on the commission and your partners in town government and other groups in town to take a stand here in Arlington to say that we do affirm dignity and equality and, and human rights and pride. So thank you for what you're doing. And uh, I look forward to seeing you at the festival. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. This is gonna be a hands up situation. So I'll take a second from anyone and anyone who wants to make any comments later. I, I saw Mr. Hurd's hand go up for a second. And um, any other comments, I mean, um, questions or anything from any of those members? Ms. Mahan? Um, to my colleague, Mr. Helmut's remarks, ditto <laughs> to uh, Ms. Ryan Volmar. Um, thank you so much for your effort on this and other committees. And I'm really um, pleased and encouraged uh, of the many partnerships that you're not only stating, but actually are establishing a, a, a working relationship with, um, certainly with Arlington Police Department, um, who um, you and I have both spoken about and sung their praises as well as um, highlighted some areas that, you know, uh, because policing is being done a different way, um, Arlington Police Department um, needs to respond that way. And I think they have, but I also wanna put a plug in similar to when you encounter, you know, a transgender individual, whether it's a, a youth or an adult, uh, I'm also pleased and hope you continue to foster the relationship with um, the Disability Commission, uh, especially around those youth and um, adults who have severe special needs 
where a not similar to um, interaction with transgender um, individuals, but where a normal interaction that a police officer or somebody else would have could also escalate a situation. And I know Arlington Police Department has been trained on that, um, but we need to you know, continue to do that. And I'm thrilled that you, you're starting to foster that connection there along with diversity, equity, inclusion, and everything else that. And I can't wait to see the chairman with his hat, with the tie, because he's a fly guy. And I'll see you in June. Thank you. Uh -huh. I, I'm, I'm not promising a tie on 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 the on, on the falls. I mean, it all depends on the temperature. The hat for sure, but we'll we'll see. <laughs> so 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 so. Anyone else? Uh, Mr. Hurd. I guess I'll officially verbalize my second, and just thank Ms. Ryan Vollmer for the presentation. Um, I pride. I always look forward to Pride Month, and I think there's a lot of activities that are really important to the town, but it's also in a town that sometimes we don't always disagree. It seems like everyone agrees with pride. Um, and it's just really a, a happy occasion We're going into summer, but you know, I do enjoy the, the festivities and the decorations around town. And it, it's a really great way for town residents to unite in support of the pride cause. Um, and I am ha very happy to hear the presentation about the uh, partnership with the police department and the real world effects that that partnership has had. And, you know, I certainly thank the police department and Chief Flaherty for reaching out, but I do want to thank the Rainbow Commission for accepting their, will being willing to help them in, in doing some work to help make the police department have the best policies that they can relative to transgender individuals. That's very important. And just like in many, many ways, Arlington seems to lead the way for seasoned towns around us. And I think that's another way that we can do so once word spreads. And uh, I look forward to what comes of that. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Mr. Corsi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I'm also uh, proud to join my colleagues in, in uh, approving the proclamation. And Mr. Ryan Vollmer, I want to thank you for the presentation tonight and, and, and for all the work you do. And, and um, I, I, I think as, as Mr. Helma said, this is a really in, in the important time where do we, there are concerns across our country within intolerance and where we can reaffirm our support here uh, through these actions and other actions. I think it's very important to do so. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Corsi. And I'm not being lazy. I really can't add anything to what my colleagues have said. I mean, you know, so so I'm going to leave it there. I mean, and, and and say that. Well, I'll actually, just ask you um, once again to tell us me when the Pride Festival is and and where, Ms. Ryan Vollmer. Sure. The, um, the Pride Festival is uh, June 12th, next to Town Hall. That I forget what it's called, but it's the green space. Okay. Um, from two to five. And on three nights, we're having um, crosswalk paintings in East Arlington, Arlington Center, in Arlington Heights. And I am a horrible human being because I can't remember which nights they're on. That's okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Out of my head. I'm but sorry. I put you on the spot. To have any of you and all of you there with us? There. The, last year we had 50 people of all ages, and there's nothing like watching um, elementary and middle school students, you know, painting. Um, the streets. They're a little bit out of control and it's fun. Great. And, and, and do you, do, um, what time is it on the 12th? The 12th from two to five. Okay, great. Thank you. So, so on a motion to um, approve the proclamation by Mr. Hurd and I'm oh, sorry, by Mr. Helmets and, and a second by Mr. Hurd. Mr. Heim? Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Corsi. Yes. Mr. Helmet. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Dickens. Yes. Thank you. See you on the 12th of that before. And then so, so we now move to the consent agenda, um, items four through eight. So number four, minutes of the meetings, April 20th, 2022nd, and May 16th, 2022nd. Number five, for approval, Boston Women's Market at Whittemore Park on Saturday, August 13th, 2022, from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. And uh, number six, request special one day 
beer and wine license on May 28th, 2022 at Robbins Library for a private event. Number seven, request a special one day beer and wine license June 3rd, 2022 at Robbins Memorial Town Hall for a private event. And lastly, number eight, request special one day beer and wine license June 4th, 2022 at Robbins Memorial Town Hall for a private event. So with that, I go to Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. And anyone, hands up for a second. Okay, thank you, Mr. Corsi. Um, comments, questions, anyone? All right, so uh, uh, motion from Mr. Hurd and a second from Mr. Corsi. Mr. Heim? Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Helmut. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Davis. Yes. Yeah, Thank you. Moving on to number nine. And uh, so we have an appointment and for the LGBTQIA plus Rainbow Commission term to expire on January 31st, 2025. Um, Ms. Laura Gittleson. Hi, I don't know. Am I supposed to just introduce myself or I wasn't sure what the process was here? That's fine. I was going to say hello and then ask okay. if you want to tell us a few words I mean, uh, sure. about, about yourself and why you want to be on the commission or better yet, why we should just be delighted to have you. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you so much for giving me the chance to introduce myself. Um, my name is Laura Gittleson and I have lived in Arlington for eight years. I live with my husband and two kids, one of whom is a first grader at the Pierce School and one who will be in kindergarten there in the fall. I am deeply committed to working on behalf of the LGBTQIA community and I'm excited about working with the Arlington Rainbow Commission. I attended my first Pride March in high school and I'm glad I got to be here for the early dis earlier discussion about upcoming celebrations in Arlington and I'm proud to live someplace that takes these celebrations so seriously. I have close family and friends who are part of the LGBTQIA plus community, and although I'm an ally and not a member of the community, I've advocated for the community for many years and in many contexts. My particular interest in advocacy is ensuring that LGBTQIA plus children and adolescents are safe in our schools, represented in the curriculum, and able to show up to every class with the confidence to be who they are and the knowledge that even if they are not fully comfortable to yet be out, they would be completely safe in doing so. I'm honored that the Rainbow Commission has accepted my application to serve and I can't wait to get to work. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gillison. And so with that, I will turn to Mr. Corsi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I'd like to move approval and, and uh, thank Ms. Gillison for our, her willingness to serve on the Rainbow Commission. And, and also thank you for your community involvement to date uh, with the, the different activities that you've been involved in and um, between the Salvo Homeless Coalition and, and just uh, completing your work on the Civilian Police Advisory uh, Committee. So thank you very much. and. Uh, Happy, as I said, to move approval. Thank you, Mr. Corsi. I'll do hands up on this one. Uh, Mr. Hurd, and it gets the second. And, and anyone wants to add anything? Okay, so thank you. I will just add that it's been a pleasure working. Um, I've seen you at work, I mean, in other venues. I, mean, uh, I remember your work on the um, Police Civilian Advisory Board study committee you know, and, and, um, and in other venues. And I, I'll also add that um, allies are the best. They really are, you know, because he, he, there's something about an ally. It's, 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 they are supportive in, in just a special way, you know. Uh, and, and I mean, and, and I mean, I've been on the other side of that too. I mean, sometimes, I mean, if it's not your cause, I mean, uh, you feel as if you're giving even more, you know, and, and so so really appreciate all that you um, have done so far, and what you're going to do on the on the Rainbow Commission. So um, with that, I, mean, um, I will ask. Well, actually, on a, a motion to approve the appointment by Mr. Hurd, and I'm sorry, by Mr. DeCourcy, and a second by uh, Mr. Hurd, uh, Mr. Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Corsi. Yes. Mr. Helen. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. 
Yes, and thank you, Ms. Gilson. Mr. Davis. Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. thank you. <laughs> well, so. Thank you all. All right, see ya. You know, so number 10, you know, board appointment to the Board of Health, any term to expire on January 31st, 2025, um, Ms. Laura White. Hello, Ms. White. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You want to tell us a little bit about yourself I mean, and why you want to be on the Board of Health? Sure. So I'm Laura White. I've been a member of the town living in Arlington since 2010. I have three kids in the town, uh, in Audison, the Gibbs, and Pierce. Um, my interest in the Board of Health stems a bit from my professional involvement. I work at the Boston University School of Public Health in the Department of Biostatistics. I'm a faculty member there and specialize in infectious disease research. Um, so I've been doing a fair bit in COVID, but other diseases as well. Um, so I'm very interested in sort of seeing how my professional experience could potentially be helpful to the town as well as learn from, I think, what has been a really uh, fantastic Department of Public Health we have in town and happy to just get involved and be a part of that effort. Thank you very much. I mean, so with that, I turn to Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. First, I'd like to uh, move approval. Um, um, and also to Ms. White. Uh, I don't know if I should say Dr. White. Depends. You can call me Ms. White, that's great. <laughs> I was gonna say, if you call you doctor, you can serve on the school committee. Everybody's a doctor on that committee. <laughs> Dr. Seuss, but anyways, um, uh, thank you so much for uh, dedicating, um, volunteering your time. We definitely couldn't afford to pay you what you're worth, <laughs> you know, looking at what you said to you. Um, and, and since I have you here and you sort of uh, uh, captured captive audience, um, just the Board of Health and um, uh, Ms. Ms. Bongiorno, who's the Director of Health and Human Services here in Arlington, is definitely aware of this and is um, willing to, and has taken extra steps, but I think more steps could be taken. So since you're gonna be a new, brand new board member and you are a mom with three kids, I think one of the areas that uh, the Board of Health does an exemplary job, but um, we need to continue to get the word out is amongst, um, and especially around COVID and, and going forward, any viruses or any other public health issue in the future is um, with severely disabled special need children, as well as adults. Um, <clears throat> I know I was working with Ms. Bongiorno on the Board of Health, setting up um, home vaccinations for different people. And I had a personal family member that I just happened to lament, um, you know, tried to do the clinic route and it just didn't work. And I was not aware myself when uh, Ms. Bongiorno said, well, that family member would qualify. And yeah, so um, I should know better. <laughs> and I did it. So, um, and I've been telling other people in my group that have a similar family member and I like that. But I think, I mean, I know uh, the Board of Health of Ms. Bongiorno certainly has been doing everything they can, but, you know, perhaps being in the school community um and having those contacts uh maybe that's something you could sort of explore and, and just the more we get the better so thank you i took way too much time but i'm very happy no it's great to hear yeah thank you thank you mr chair thank you mrs mahan so this is going to be another hands-up situation uh, mr helmuth thank you thank you mr chair i'm happy to second this i was just delighted when i read your letter and your and your resume and that has nothing to do with the fact that i spent 23 years of my career at the bu school of public health working for dr rosenblum so dr white thank you thank you for for being willing to serve and to contribute your expertise um, your expertise in infectious disease and sud uh, substance use disorders as, as well as as the epidemiology and biostatistics of covid is just you know just such a bullseye for so much of what the Board of Health has to contemplate. Um, and you know, we are really, really fortunate that you are willing to serve. So thank you. And I look forward to some continued great work coming from the Board of Health. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Anyone else? All right. Well, um, yes, I, mean, I, I agree with both um, Mrs. Wuhan and, and, and Mr. Helmuth. I mean, and and um, he apparently saw 
your, um, your resume. I did not, you know, and, and that's okay. But I, I just knew I was going to be in, impressed with with it if I had had seen it because there's usually some little nugget in there that always makes me feel connected in some way. But hey, you're totally qualified, and and you're joining a very qualified bunch of people, um, in whom I, mean, I place a lot of confidence in. Um, and I, I've always, I mean, I will support the decisions and, and I've told them, especially when it comes to COVID, I mean, um, if you do something conservative, I mean, you can look for me to be behind you. Um, so um, with the motion from Mrs. Mahan and a second from um, Mr. Helmuth on the approval of this appointment, Mr. Hein. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. Diggins. Yes, thank you very much. Thanks, yes, take care. Thank you, appreciate it. Welcome. So moving on to number 11, licenses and permits, outdoor restaurant and retail permit application for Kickstand Cafe. And so Mrs. Ms. Shea is gonna join us and hmm, I think, I'm gonna let you start it off, Ms. Shea. Hmm. Ah, okay, hi. Hi. Uh, first, let me apologize. I'm just at the tail end of a COVID isolation, so I'm a little brain foggy. So if I'm not my normal, clever self, that's my excuse. I'm feeling fine now, but I'm just uh, getting over it. Um, so normally the type of outdoor dining license that Kickstand has doesn't require um, an appearance before the board, but the, an issue arose with, with this year, so that's why I filed a resubmission and asked for the board to consider a specific issue related to it, which is what the exact perimeter of our patio is. In the first two seasons of outdoor dining, we used both an area of our parking lot, which is clearly on our my landlord's private property. And then that portion of the little, yeah, I'm sure you're mostly all familiar with the property there. There's like a little brick covered plaza that is partly owned by my landlord, but has a, a part through the middle of it that is, uh, I don't pretend to understand the legalities of it, but not owned by us, owned either by the MBTA or the town or somebody, some, some governmental entity has the, the ownership of that piece where the railroad bed used to be. So the plaza um, in the old days before the intersection was reconfigured, the bike path had a crosswalk at the very end of it that crossed you across one place. And the way that you transversed to the other part of the bike path was through that plaza. When the intersection was redone, the sidewalks were all redone, that the intersection was got given a traffic light and a crosswalk and the, the way of coming off the path is to turn right on Swan Place, wait at the light, cross, and if you're a pedestrian, same thing. There's a crosswalk there, there are signals. Um, so this year, I, I guess because some the, the inspectional services received some complaints from people that a public way was being blocked off for our patio, they asked me to keep open that, that shortcut across the brick plaza. So I've done that since they asked me to do it. And my permit application asks that I be allowed to, to block it off so that we can use it for tables and chairs as we have the past two patio seasons, which has been, not to put too fine a point on it, but you know, critical to our survival. The fact that we have so much outdoor space to, to play with has really allowed us to survive the pandemic. All right, is that it, Mr. Ms. Shea? Great. Um, yeah, unless you have specific questions about it, and I'm I, I'm not exactly sure what 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 you want to hear from me about it, but that's the gist of why I'm here tonight. Yeah, no problem. I just didn't want to interrupt you if you weren't done. So no, I wasn't really requiring um, more input from you. So, so, um, I'm going to turn to my colleagues first on this, unless Mr. Heim wants to say something. But I would imagine if he did, he put his hand up. You know, so okay. I'm just going to turn to my colleagues at this point uh, and, and go to um, start with um, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think I just saw Mr. Himes' hand, and that's a good thing because I had to. Oh well, well, too bad. I have a question for him anyway. <laughs> Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah. 
Mr. Uh, through, does the town council or the town manager for that matter have any concerns about either of the scenarios that were outlined? And I did read uh, the extensive and helpful, very informative application, um, either of the plans um, that were um, submitted just in terms of legal access to, to the property and, and controlling the property and all. Mr. Chairman? Oh yes, please, Mr. Hunt. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think what I would say is that while the property um, sort of arrives in its condition, you know, the slightly more complicated avenue than our traditional um, street and plaza uh, licenses to basically put out tables, it's really a very similar situation. If you look at uh, uh, Broadway Plaza, if you look at you know the various um, street uh, permits that we offer to allow outdoor seating, uh, certain part of the you know public way is encumbered by chairs and tables throughout a portion of the day. Um, the sort of critical piece is that people can navigate their way through it, that you know things are ADA compliant. I believe that's been vetted, uh, th this proposal was vetted for those purposes. So I, I suppose that's the way I, I would encourage the board to think about it. There is a layer about the MBTA property. Uh, the MBTA is a wonderful partner in many ways, um, they don't really engage us much with respect to um, any portion of land that might be uh, part of their sort of piece of the public way. And so it's been a little bit difficult to navigate it. Unlike other parts of what was once the rail bed, um, this is uh, sort of accompanied by, as Ms. Shea sort of outlined, a perfectly accessible public sidewalk that you don't necessarily need to go through this particular area in order to get where you need to go. And in fact, yeah. um, given the clamp project a number of years ago, we didn't want people going through that anymore. We wanted people taking a more accessible way. So um, I think that uh, I don't wanna elevate form over substance here. This is really not that different from other outdoor seating areas. It is a public way and you'd be permitting it. And uh, the revisions that are made here look like they're um, a, making sure that this is transparent and B, making sure that, you know, when the Kickstand Cafe is not in operation, people can use this uh, piece of the right of way in the same way that they can use sidewalks, parts of Broadway, plaza, et cetera. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Heim. Uh, Mr. Chaplain, did you have anything you wanted to add or any, any comments about, about the proposal? Thank you, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, may I? Um, yes. uh, the, only to just uh, reiterate what Ms. Shea and Attorney Heim just said that from a practical point of view, the area has been designed to not use that space as a public way. Mm -hmm. Maintaining the access as Attorney Heim described, of course, is key, but the crosswalk is at the intersection of Mass Ave and Swan. And it's not, you know, it is no longer designed, even though there is a curb cut and an opening in the railing that is not it's not designed to be utilized in that way right now. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and, and I find, you know, it's something else I really appreciate in, in Ms. Shea's application was just noting the investments that she has made in, in, for business for that public space, you know, and I think I view this really as, I, yes, you know, it's operating a business, I think a really valuable business, but also it's a public, you know, maintaining that space and providing that space is also a service to the public um, in creating shared uh, space that is one of the things we hear about the most from the residents is we want more businesses where there are cafes and outdoor seating and, and opportunities to socialize and meet and meet up. Um, and I, th I think the fact that um, you know there's the shared uh, private ownership of that and that you've made investments of that is really meaningful to me, um, and and we appreciate that. Um, so I, I'm uh, I'd like to move that um, and, and I look to Attorney Heim. Um, to, to help me refine this motion if necessary, but uh, re, re, uh, move that we uh, clarify our permit to uh, of that space so that the Kickstand Cafe can, can use the plaza area during the summer dining season um, as requested and um, subject to conditions you know, from the Board of Health. I just for further note that the, you know, the, the health department um, had no concerns about either of the plans. So I'd like to go with the one that I think is the least burdensome, and, and I'm persuaded that you know we're just fine with the status quo of the last couple of years, given the given the actual traffic patterns um, and access that's there. Um, Mr. Hunt, does that suffice as a motion to uh, to accomplish what I wanted to? It does. Thanks, Attorney Hunt. Thank you, Mr. Chair.
Thank you, Mr. Hamas. Me. So um, I'll take um. We're just gonna go hands up on this one. Second. Uh, so 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 uh, I heard Mr. Um. Well, I actually I, I saw Mr. Corsi's hand go up, and since I said hands, I'm gonna go with Mr. Corsi on this one. And uh, uh and, and so so we'll go. And you've had a bunch of seconds, Mr. Hearn, so we'll share one uh, with Mr. Corsi. Anything you want you want to say, Mr. Corsi? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and I, I will second Mr. Helms' motion. I, I do um, want to thank Ms. Shea for the for the detail and the application. I hope you are feeling better, and and, and I'm in agreement with Mr. Helms. I I appreciate you coming back to us on on this issue, but I, I see the, the way the, the sidewalk is configured, the way the, um, the bike route is or, or around the area there. Um, I, I see this as, as a, a good use of the site by, by kickstand during, during the summer months. And, and um, I, on, to be honest with you, I walk by there a lot and it, 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 I, I take the sidewalk, I take the right turn and I'll like go straight as I'm going down Mass Ave. And, um, I think in a lot of instances, we've had approvals of, of, of restaurants on Mass Ave that you could argue are more disruptive in terms of what's going on, happy to support those. But um, I, I think this is a good use of the space. And it is unique space, as you said, because your sign is on your landlord's property on the other side of the plaza. So as you walk by it, you see the sign, then you have the right of way, and then you have more, more space owned by your landlord. So um, I... I um, I, I don't see an issue. I'm glad it's, I, I'm happy to discuss it. I know the issue was raised and, and uh, we're aware of what the concerns were, but I, I can um, certainly support this. Thank you, Mr. Corsi. Any other comments, questions, concerns? Mrs. Mahan? Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Ms. Shea. And just very briefly, um, yes, you're correct. It's MBTA land, as is the Minuteman Trailway. It's that also known as the bike path, but we're sort of the overseers uh, of that um, and, and also including this plaza. And I just want to make it clear just on the record that um, you've also agreed um, in lieu of um, being permitted to use this public space that um, you're going to engage in sanitation um, as well as um, some beautification around the area. And I would just say if, um, on the MBTA land, the plaza, um, if you see any bricks or displaced roots that you um, can see is gonna be a possible uh, slip and fall situation, if you could just notify the town and let us know and we'll make sure we let the MBTA know and then we'll decide from there who should make those um, improvements. Uh, but everything else in there, and I, it's my understanding you've agreed to do this even though it's really just the land that your landlord owns, but you've also agreed to keep the plaza clean, do some beautification and sanitation. So we are getting something back from you for use of the plaza. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Wuhan. Anyone else? Okay, well, my only question is, Mr. And this is to you, Mr. Helmuth. I mean, was your motion to um, allow I me mean, the, the current, well, the, initially approved usage, which was full uses of that plaza, um, have it closed off be only during hours of operation or for, for permanent all the time? No, well, it was, it, so, the, so the application I had outlined two scenarios and the preferred scenario from Ms. Shea was um, that, that they'd be able to block that off during the, the summer dining seasons for the, just sort of the duration of the permit so that they wouldn't have to try to install mobile barriers to, to um, open it back up and shut every day. And I, you know, and my reasoning for that was um, just being very satisfied that they're perfectly safe and logical and in convenient traffic patterns on the sidewalk, which I yeah. myself use as well. So, so that's fine. Okay. That's fine. So, so uh, yeah. I, I was missing a detail in your, your, um, sure. Yeah. Motion. No, thank you for, thank you for clarifying. Yeah. Well, it's, I, I think it's my brain fog. I mean, and my brain fog is caused by town meeting mm -hmm. in the, at 11 o'clock. But, uh, 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 and so, um, so yeah, and I was in favor of that anyways. I mean, so, so I have nothing more to add, you know, than um, to um, say, you know, I think I know where it's headed. And, and so I wish you the best in, in the rest of the summer. Uh, so on a motion to approve um, of the, our original, um, approval which is to allow the full uses of at plaza as you 
as you were originally granted permission in, uh, uh, no, by Mr. Helmuth and a uh, second by Mr. Corsi, Mr. Heim. Mr. Chair, I'm sorry, I'm having my own brain fog for a moment. Have we treated these like public hearings in the past? I, I, my, my, my brain is now stuck, we have not, okay. Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, I don't recall, okay. you know, it's not listed here as a hearing, but that doesn't, that, yeah. I mean, if you nope. that's, that's enough. Yeah. I'm sorry, my, sure. I'm in the same place. Okay, uh, Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Corsi. Yes. Mr. Helmet. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. Diggins. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Thank you, Ms. Shea. Take care. Thank you. Bye. So we move on to item number 12. Uh, which is discussion and approval for a letter to Mass Housing regarding proposed 40B at 1021 through 1025 Mass Ave condominiums. We have Ms. Rate and Ms. Linema and, and you're listing on here, Mr. Heim. So um, who wants to go first? Uh, I'm um, gonna start, I'll start Ms. No. Rate. You're, you're, you're listed top, you got top billing. So I'll start you, Ms. Rate. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Jennifer Ray, Director of Planning and Community Development. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly give an overview and then I'll open it up for any questions. Would that work for you? Yes, please. Okay. So on April 29th, um, the town received a letter from Mass Housing regarding the proposed 40B for Mass Ave condominiums. They were seeking comments from the town as part of the site eligibility letter process. We've gone through this previously for 1165R and Thorndike Place. So you're familiar with this process, but I'm glad to answer any questions if you have them. So this is a project that would be 50 ownership units located at 1021 to 1027 Mass Ave. And we coordinated a site visit with representatives from the Conservation Commission, the Zoning Board of Appeals, Mass Housing, the developer and members of the public attended where we were able to walk the site, um, you know, understand the, the plans that were that we had a copy of um, and ask any questions. Um, we also requested uh, comments from town departments, boards, commissions, others. And what we compiled for you that was uh, included in the agenda was comments that we, you know, essentially summarized a number of different categories about how this development advances or addresses or has an impact on things like long-term planning, smart growth, affordability of housing, stormwater, conservation, environment, traffic, public safety, water, sewer, utilities, et cetera. So it's a very, very comprehensive review for the, uh, the materials that we had available to us that are provided as part of this you know, early application process. Um, so now we're seeking the select board's comments. And initially these were due on May 30th, but um, we, you know, given the timing, we can actually request additional time. And I would suggest that we, we provide the comments by uh, June 17th, that's a Friday, um, which gives us another uh, couple of weeks basically from today. So maybe another, a future meeting so that you, the, this board has sufficient time to, you know, we can answer questions this evening as best we can, but to give you something a little bit more uh, prepared in order to advance it to uh, provide comments to Mass Housing. So with that, I'll turn it back to, well, actually I'll check to see if Kelly or Doug would like to add anything, if that's okay, Mr. Chair. Yes, yeah, please. Okay, please. excellent. Um, Doug. I'll let Ms. Linema speak to it first. No, I, I have nothing additional to add, although I'm here to answer questions. If anyone has them, that's um, assisted in gathering the responses from various departments. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Hyde. I just want to add a few practical notes. Um, uh, one of the things that's been, uh, because folks uh, mostly watching from home may have seen different versions of this, uh, instances where the board has opposed project eligibility, instances where the board has supported project eligibility, instances where the board has supported, but with some comment and um, I wouldn't say caveat, but some, some notations. Um, in this case, one of the things that I think is valuable and important you'll see in your materials is that um, these folks have worked proactively with the town to try to understand what some of the issues are in advance. And Ms. Rader, Ms. Linema can correct me if I'm wrong, including with the Conservation Commission, which is 
um, been very helpful in this context. Um, the board doesn't have to stake out a strong position. And the purposes of project eligibility are, as Ms. Rate has sort of outlined in, 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 her, um, in, her, in her drafts, uh, limited. It's not uh, the board's role, as the board will recall, to actually evaluate the application, which isn't even in a place where you can fully evaluate it and see what conditions should be placed on the property. Um, we're in a very preliminary phase um, and the board's wisdom can dictate any number of uh, approaches to this. So if you have any questions specifically about project eligibility and what's within the scope of it, I'm happy to try to answer them, but I know the board has been through this several times. Thank you. Thank you, Zaheim. And so with that, I am going to turn to Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, are we looking for a motion to receive or a motion to approve? Well, it, it's discussion and approval, and, um, and so oh, we, I think, yeah, so, and I think the deal is that we want to determine the, whether or not we give enough approval to, let me think, let think this through a little bit more. Um, it, Ms. Ray has stated that they can give us more time, I mean, so that this doesn't have to be like the approval. I mean, and so, so we can say, we can give comments, I mean, and then they can come back to us. So I think it's a matter of how we want to approve it. So let's call it approval I and mean, then go from there. So. Have you well, given us that motion? I will move approval okay. subject to any objections by Attorney Heim. <laughs> thank you for the presentation. Um, thank you, Ms. Rate, for it's nice to be able to have you on for one more meeting and one more presentation. Um, I was really happy with, with the thorough materials. I read through them all, um, and it made me confident that the experts that we have in planning and and DPW and our conservation commission have everything under control as to what they're looking for and what they're going to expect from the application. I like the project. I like the project when we have the presentation. I think it it's well suited for the area. And I do like the proactive steps that this applicant has made to work with the town. And I think the design that we've seen so far incorporates a lot of uh, aspects that the town would like to see in this type of project. My one, the area that I have the most concern is probably the connection to Mass Ave with 50 units now coming in and on and off of Mass Ave and how that will integrate with our current traffic patterns. But like I said, all of our current experts in town are on that and we'll, I'm sure we'll work with the applicant to alleviate the, the impact of any traffic disruptions from the project. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Hurt. So this is going to be another hands up situation. And so anyone want to talk, just put your hand up. Mr. Nohan. I second, um, I believe Mr. Hurt's motion and um, a nod of the head will suffice for the first question. This is just the beginning prelim preliminary stages. If as we move along down um, the pathway, um, there's something that, uh, a majority of the board or even individual member of the board finds very concerning, we can have that conversation and um, adjust accordingly. And I see nodding. Um, and to Ms. Rader, or uh, Ms. Linema, um, and I'll try to make this really brief because I know it's beginning stages, but I also know that um, the planning department has received correspondence and I'm especially interested around the Conservation Commission res um, response as well as a response from our town engineer, um, Wayne Shanad. Um, the, and then the only other thing, and if it's in here, I apologize, but um, having going through this with the Myrak property, um, and I've had conversations with Mr. Chapdelaine, and I know he's been um, handling that, uh, even though the town doesn't have a direct responsibility, but invariably with these pro projects, there's the uh, uh, ro increased road in an issue. Um, so I assume that would fall under the Board of Health if you could kind of bring that to their attention. Um, and it's a temporary thing. It's just during construction. But um, 
I, I know the fire station, the firehouse house will be okay, but a lot of other people will be up on chairs, whether inside or outside. And then um, I guess what I would do is just maybe note um, from ComCom and from the town engineer um, and, and also acknowledge that this is um, beginning stages, um, but there are some uh, points in there, especially around stormwater and sewer that I'm, I'm concerned about along with my colleagues and, and you all are. Um, so my first question would be some of the uh, points in, uh, and I'll start with the town engineer's letter um, regarding, you know, test tools, I and I um, connection, as well as uh, along, I think the sewer issue, possibly putting in a T connection, which I honestly don't know what that means, T-E-E. -E. Um, is our approval with the comments from the town engineer, do they go hand in hand that these are issues that have to be resolved and the town has to agree upon that maybe we might not agree on how they get resolved, but they are definitely going to get resolved. There will be an action plan to, there's about six points in the town engineer's um, uh, uh, submission to the board, um, largely under stormwater, water, and sewer. Um, and I'll privately email um, to you all, but what is the status of that? Because I know it's this, this should be done you know, the, this hole should be dug, um, water sewer connection. How does that work? Um, so Mrs. Lineman, Ms. Lineman? Sure. Um, yeah, uh, Kelly Lineman, Assistant Director of the Department of Planning and Community Development. Thank you, Ms. Mahan. Um, these are essentially recommendations to the applicant. Um, and as this is in the project eligibility stage, the applicant has not yet seen these comments. So these would be comments that would be sent to the applicant. They're also sent to Mass Housing, um, and they they provide an opportunity for the applicant to provide these in more detailed drawings as part of um, should the project advance to a comprehensive permit application. And that has yet to be seen because it, the project would need to be approved and receive a project eligibility letter. So these will be these are basically a um, kind of a heads up for the applicant that these are issues that the town is going to be looking at should the project advance. Um, and these are issues that the town, that the Zoning Board of Appeals may want to require as part of its decision on the comprehensive permit application if we reach that point. Okay, so in the future, will the select board receive whatever the applicant submits? Um, right now, just talking about Mr. Shanad's um, memo to them, will we receive the correspondence on the points under the three categories that I highlighted, how they plan on addressing it? Are not addressing it. So, I, I please, um, uh, Jenny or, or um, Mr. Hyde, please correct me if I'm wrong on this. But um, if the project advances, advances to the comprehensive permit application, then correspondence will be between the Zoning Board of Appeals and the applicant through, through a public hearing process. Um, we also will provide opportunities at various points for boards and committees, including the select board, to provide additional comment. Um, and all of this information is publicly available on a page, a subpage of the Zoning Board of Appeals on the town website. So we will be posting these throughout the entire hearing process. And if I through you, Mr. Chair, on this on this point, and then I'll move on quickly to CONCOM. Um, if, if I could ask either Ms. Raid or Attorney Heim, is it appropriate um, for me, for the, I don't want to go into it at the meeting, but the five or six concerns that seem really important to me that, um, A, I'd like to see them addressed and B, how they are addressed, that if I send that to Ms. Raid um, and receive a response back to the full select board, is that appropriate? I'm glad to take that. Thank you, Ms. Raid, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. That is absolutely appropriate right now. So if individual board members have questions or comments or concerns, that this is the, a really great time to communicate that to us so that we can put that into a letter. Um, of course, we'll be working with uh, Attorney Heim on this letter, you know, drafting it. So if you have specific issues, if you think there's something important to emphasize, 
if you have you know some questions that you are in, or issues that you know will be coming up in the future that you would like them to address that you're aware of in that immediate vicinity that relate to traffic or other you know issues in the neighborhood those are all important things to put into this comment letter and i'll give you an example in um actually in, in the comments that we provided we already made a note that we um they've proposed 50 afford uh, home ownership units and of course 13 of those would be affordable and we say you know early in the process we would like you to provide at least half of them at a lower you know to people who make a lower income than what you would typically provide um, under chapter 40b so we you know we're we're already those are our comments and we're moving in that direction but you might you might agree you might say something different and you might add on to other issues as well like the things that you've noted from uh, the town engineers uh, letter and other concerns that you might have or or things that are interest uh, you know of interest uh, per, to you for you know about the design there could be any number of different things that you comment on at this point as as uh, Ms. Lyonema just said that you know we're looking for the comments it's basically feedback to the developer they shape that in the application that formally um, should eventually get filed with the zoning board of appeals this is the first part that basically gives comments to mass housing so that eventually they can provide the project eligibility letter and then that's when the clock starts with the Zoning Board of Appeals. And also, as um, was noted, we can come up back in the future and you know field additional comments from this board, share any materials. Uh, we have already started a page on the website, so all of the materials are being shared at this point in time. Um, but we'll be happy to keep in touch with you over the course of this project. Okay, and if Ms. Lundema could do me a huge favor that when I do send the email, um, the three under engineering, are stormwater, water, and sewer. And for some reason, if I, what I send you doesn't include one of those categories, if you could just remind me. And then um, lastly, on the Conservation Commission um, comments, A, since it's coming from the Conservation Commission, does that have a little more um, teeth to it in terms of um, they have to either, they, they have to address it either with the suggestions that CONCOM made or something else that they deem uh, to be parallel to what Conservation Commission has highlighted. Um, I, you're addressing that to? Um, uh, I will start either with Ms. Ray. Right. Sure. Thank you. It would be, they would be wise to address the issues that have been raised. I mean, as part of their application process and particularly with the Conservation Commission, they will have to go through a separate you know, permitting process after uh, any, if any application that is, you know, eventually approved. So the, if there are, you know, if there's feedback from the commission that they have to incorporate into the development at this time, it would be very, I, I think that that would be very wise because they don't want to have to reconfigure the development in order to achieve those goals if they don't meet them in the future. So this is absolutely the time to address that. Okay. And yes, there's some more teeth to it. Awesome. And then if I could just add one more thing to Ms. Linema's plate that um, when I send the email, I'm going to highlight um, questions on the four uh, con con com, uh, comments uh, that at some point I'd like the board to be sent just information how they get it addressed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I apologize for taking so much. It's just flooding and I and I and all that's like, that's my, I'm, I'm a water fog. So we'll go there. No need to apologize. We're doing fine here. So I'm not trying to rush things. You know, so thank you very much. Me and, and um, anyone else questions, comments? Mr. Um, DeCorsi. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and before I start, I, I also want to uh, wish Ms. Ray well and uh, thank her for her years of service to the town and, and wish you the best of luck at the, the Northern Middlesex Council of Governments. Uh, so I know this will be the last meeting that you, you attend, so best of luck to you. Um, so just a couple of comments, and, and I agree, I, I appreciated the proactive approach that the applicant took here in making a presentation to us. Uh, I'm thinking back to the MIRAC uh, original project eligibility application and, and a common period. And, and the letter to Mass Housing in that instance came from the select board along with other comments from um, different, different um, committees in town or, or departments. And for consistency, and, and maybe a question for Attorney Heim or, or Ms. Ray, um, I, I, I'm happy that we have additional time, but it seems to me for consistency, there should be some sort of cover letter from the, from the select board on, on this, um, consistent with our prior practice and 
consistent with the regulations. And, and I think if we have until June 17th, I, I guess I'll stop there and ask, um, is that what you're envisioning on, on the, what would come back from the town, a letter from perhaps signed by Mr. Diggins on behalf of the board? Um, Ms. Drake, Ms. Lineman? That, that was the intention, yes. That, uh, the, the, the town comment letter was directed to the board, so we're sort of helping to gather all of the comments and Kelly is compile, compiling everything. I think we still probably have some more um, outreach to do to, and now that we have a little, we'll have a little bit more time, we'll, we'll make sure that we have everything in place. You'll have your letter and then working with attorney Heim, we'll make sure there's a cover message to mass housing that, you know, um, provides sort of, you know, the, the overview of all of the comments. Okay, now that, and, and that sounds great. And, and I think given that, and, and given that we have till the 17th, we have a meeting on the 13th, I, um, I you know, whether this is a, a, a addition or a friendly amendment to Mr. Hurd's motion, but I, I think it makes sense for the actual letter to, or, or final draft of the letter to be put before the board at its, its meeting, maybe on, on June 13th, because we did have a situation with my Iraq where we had an initial draft. There was some comments, some concerns, that were raised and, and we were able to address those and, and get a final letter out. But are there any concerns, Attorney Heim, Ms. Rader, Ms. Lynam, or if, if we went about it that, that that way, taking a look at a, or, or proving a, the, the, the contents of the letter that uh, the chair would probably sign on our behalf? Um, Ms. Wright? I don't, I don't see any problem with that. I, I think that that's this, you know, the same practice again. I think that that's, that will work. Okay. All right. And, and just for clarification, this, this came up, there was a comment at town meeting and, and we've had different comments. Um, to the extent that there are safe harbors that are in play here, those would be asserted by the Zoning Board of Appeals. That is not something that gets addressed in the project eligibility stages. I, I just ask if you could confirm if that's the case. Right. Yes, that is the case. <laughs> we, we will. And, and, and attorney I might want to add a little bit more to that about how that process works. So that, yes, that is true. And Doug, please. Mr. Thank, you, Mr. Boyd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, Mr. Of course, see, it's, a, it's, a, it's a valuable comment um, and, and question. So uh, the two things that I really want to emphasize about this, that any um, quote unquote safe harbor uh, ability that the ZBA would have to assert is for the ZBA to assert. Um, folks can want them to assert it, but ultimately they're the ones that have to vote when they receive the application to assert safe harbor status. And I'd just like to take a moment of everybody's time to remind folks what that means. It does not mean an outright rejection of a 40B application. It means that at the end of the day, unless that um, safe harbor status is appealed by an applicant, the ZBA's decision is the final decision. There's not an avenue to appeal to the HAC. So sometimes we talk about safe harbor status if it means there will be no more 40B applications. That's not what it means. And there are also types of safe harbor status that are static. In other words, um, there are safe harbor status that are the result of housing production plans that don't last forever. And then there's safe harbor status due to general land area, safe harbor status due to actual, um, actually having 10% of the housing. So it's a little bit of a nuanced thing it's for the ZBA to assert. And it doesn't mean that they're rejecting something. It means that whatever they decide and approval with conditions um, and approval as applied or a rejection ends with the ZBA and doesn't advance to the HAC if the applicant so chooses. Thank you. Thanks for time. Mr. Corsi? That, that's it. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you, Attorney Hunt, for that response. You're welcome. So um, any other comments, questions? Mr. Her Mr. Helmuth? Uh, uh, nothing, no, no, nothing to add to my uh, co the comprehensive comments from my um, colleagues. I, I do appreciate the, the suggestion of taking some extra time. I think that'll be helpful to make sure that we you know, get everything in um, by the 17th. So, so thanks for the good work on this. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Yes, I was impressed. I mean, quick question um, to um, probably Ms. Ray. I mean, how many, um, how many people went on the tour? You know. I don't know. Were there like ten people? I, yeah, I think about ten. We had representatives. Yeah, it was um, it was actually posted as a public meeting, um, and so it it there were three members of the public who also uh, were there. Great. 
thanks. You know, so yeah, so um, I, I'm impressed with the um, the what we've seen so far I me mean, from from the town, uh, and and I, I did like the suggestion of making the private um, garden or park, you know, um, accessible to the public. I me mean, mainly, I me mean, not only I think to just kind of integrate it into the public, but also as a way to teach the public I me mean, how to do that kind of of um, garden or park I mean, in such an area um, with invasive um, trees or plants. I mean, so, so I look forward to um, seeing this move along. And, and so um, I have nothing else to add other than to say, you know, thank you also, you know, but as I said in email, because we're going to be in touch, we, this doesn't have to be uh, goodbye, it'll just be so long. And I look forward to interacting with you uh, a lot more because I have just learned so much from you. You know, you've always been so open and and accommodating, you know, and um, just a just a, a real wonderful resource me to the town. And so you're going to be in the region and you know how I feel about the region. Pete. And so we're going to be working together on various things in one way or another. So so thank you and look forward to um, seeing you around. You know, so on a motion from Mr. Heard me for an approval and a second from uh, Ms. Mahan. Mr. Han? Just so I'm clear, Mr. Chair, the motion is going to be that uh, they approve, the board is approving what the uh, planning directors put together tonight. We will develop a cover letter uh, that will subsequently in further detail um, the select board's um, comments, including any individual comments that are provided or questions from Ms. Mahan or any other board members. Uh, to be transmitted um, following the June 13th meeting, correct? Yes. Thank yes, you, sir. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Hellman? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Yannis Vogt? Great. Thank you. And, and moving on, let me just pull up my window because my screen went to sleep. Uh, so we have item 13, uh, discussion on Mass Ave parking, the Mass Ave parking study near the Appleton Street and Mass Ave intersection. Um, and that's gonna be with Mr. Anstubbs. So Mr. Corsi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this had come up as, as the board knows last, last fall. And at that time I um, recused myself because of, I have a relative who, who was a business owner on the block uh, nearby this intersection. So consistent with that recusal, I'm going to recuse myself from the discussion again this evening. Thank you, Mr. Corsi. So um, in terms of letting you know um, when we are done, will you handle that, Ms. Chapeline? Yes, I'd be happy to contact okay. Mr. DeCorsi to let him know. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. So, all right, Ms. Samson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And do you need screen sharing, uh, Dan? Um, not necessarily, only if you'd like to bring up the report, but I, I will just say a few words. I didn't uh, create a separate presentation for this, um, but thank you. Yes, uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Mr. Chair. Um, so this is the, um, as, as you may recall, this was a uh, request of the select board from this last fall related to the Mass Ave Appleton area and that intersection. And so staff, um, again, went ahead and collected data from that intersection about parking and the, the area that we looked at was um, along Mass Ave from Richardson Ave to Fessenden Road, uh, Forest Street from Mass Ave to Pierce Street, Appleton Street from Mass Ave to Acton Street, Appleton Place from Mass Ave to Burton Street and then Burton Street from Mass Ave to Appleton Place. And so that was the area. There's a map that was included with the materials as well uh, that goes along with the report. And so the sort of study or report is broken into a number of sections, just uh, background, the existing conditions and the data collection methodology, the data analysis about utilization and turnover, uh, the impacts from the short term implementation and then a conclusion. And so this was a study that was um, 
you know, conduct, conducted by staff, we also used a, a number of volunteer residents to help collect data. Um, I created a spreadsheet of all of the parking within the area to within, you know, this area that we were looking at for them to be able to check off and go uh, hour by hour um, to look at, you know, how many people were parking there and for how long. Um, so we collected about 22 hours worth of parking data over six days in October of this past fall. And um, the largest set of data that we have from that period is on October, uh, Thursday, October 7th, um, is when we had about eight, uh, I think, I believe maybe 10 hours actually of data. And so we surveyed 136 parking spaces, 97 of them on Mass Ave. And really what we found was that there was a pretty plentiful supply of on-street parking in the study area over the course of the day. Um, the industry, the sort of parking industry uses a threshold of 85% in terms of the amount of parking that's, that's being utilized to determine whether there's a sort of supply demand gap. If you're over that, if there's 90% you know, or 95% of the parking spaces being used and there's a demand for more than what's really there because you're trying to see um, uh, somebody who's looking for a parking space you know you want them that to have at least a couple of spaces open that they could find at any one time and what we found was really the um, it was more around 50 percent of the parking was was being used on mass ave with the average utilization being about 42 percent 50 percent was um, you know, what it got up to a little bit over that at some points of the day. Um, and some segments of Mass Ave had low turnover with vehicles parked beyond the, the posted two hour time limit along Mass Ave. Um, we also found there was low parking utilization on the immediately adjacent side streets that I mentioned. Uh, we didn't include some of the private ways that are near there like Clark Street or Fessenden Road. Um, and also looked at the parking spaces that were removed in November as part of the modified option two uh, for Massive Appleton that was implemented. And many of those parking spaces um, were either underutilized within what we looked at, or there was pretty easy alternative parking locations uh, readily available along the corridor. Um, so the rest of the study really breaks out some of these specific sections that uh, are of particular concern or interest. And then some of the, the other attachments, like I mentioned, was a map and also a, um, a, a spreadsheet showing basically all of the data analysis with uh, lots and lots of uh, graphs and things that are helpful to understand um, what was going on there. So I'm happy to take any uh, further questions on it. Um, thank you, Mr. Amstelson. And, and I had asked Dan not to um, be make any effort to create a presentation of what I thought was an excellent report. And, and so, because I know, like I said earlier, we do all the reading. We just no concerns about people reading what is um, put on the agenda. So um, I think what we're gonna go for here is just a, a motion to receive um, the, the study in the report. That's that's it. And then we will just talk, um, ask questions, and, and then I'll have a little discussion after that. So I'll, I'll, with that, I'll go to um, Ms. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd like to move receipt. Um, actually, I think I'll save my possibly two questions when we go to the next agenda item, which is the MassWorks grant, um, which I think this first is sort of a precursor, some work to be done to take the next agenda item. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Mahan. Um, so I just do hands on this. Mr. Hurt. I really like my seconds. Okay. I'll second that motion. And I just want to thank everyone, Dan and everyone in planning that did work on this and whoever our, our residents are that they should know who they are that helped out. Thank them as well. Um, it was very interesting read. And I think as I went through it, it confirmed that we made the right choice um, last fall as to the hybrid approach between the two uh, two designs that we had, whereas it shows that in the wake of the hybrid approach, there still seems to be abundant parking, but it also shows that there is a pretty good amount of utilization on the south side of 
Mass Ave across from the businesses. I think it, at one point in the morning, it said it was 60 to 70%. So those parking spaces definitely are being used. So I think the approach that we had was a was the best of both worlds. And what the end result that we got is a very safe area. And as you drive through now, I feel a lot safer. And I think drivers are a lot more aware of the dangers that posed by that intersection. So I, it does, again, it does make me feel confident that we made the right decision at that time. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Mr. Hurd. Any other questions, comments? Mr. Helm. Okay. Well, <laughs> it's um. Oh, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. I think you're going for Mr. Helmet there. Yeah. Well, he didn't say anything, so I thought maybe. Well, he didn't I, I, I should be used to answering to Mr. Hurd by now, Mr. Chair, but <laughs> but I wasn't in that moment. No. Um, so, um, this was an outstanding report. It, 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 the, the amount of work that are represented uh, both in doing the study observations and the analysis is, is really kind of staggering. And I really, really appreciate it. Uh, I think this will be really helpful to us as we look toward the long-term safety improvements, the permanent safety improvements that we need. I'm glad we did the study, even though we did, and Mr. Hurd uh, pointed out, we, we did implement uh, a rapid um, design for the short-term improvements, but I think it's, it's really worthwhile having done this because, and, and, I, and I appreciate that it, it, it takes into account the fact that we did um, the, the, the short-term improvements and kind of does some analysis on what, you know, the impact of that is. So we're, you know, so that's, it's, uh, I think it's a good next step in, um, in the long-term needs to for this uh, project. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. I mean, Ms. Helmuth, you know, so it is interesting because we, I, um, I guess I came to the opposite conclusion as Mr. Hurd. Uh, because for me, it indicates me that we could be take out that parking on the south side and, and not really hurt um, the parking situation in that area uh, at all uh, um, because of the, the underutilization, because once we, 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 there just seems to be, and, and also it seems that a lot of the parking in, on the south side is long-term parking, you know, and so, so, and, and so, Hearing anecdotal evidence in of bike conflicts in on the north, north side, you know, a, I still really would like to get a bike lane in on the north side, uh, and that would involve removing the parking on the south side, you know. So I don't know if we can get there, you uh, know. Uh, and I want to try to get there in a way that uh, is respectful of everyone in the process. And by that, I mean, I don't want to push fast. I really would like to provide opportunity for people to think about this and to talk with people um, and for us to get more public input and then um, see where we go. And as Ms. Mahan said, Perhaps what comes out of the next item um, will inform us, meaning as to um, when we might want to move uh, on on making that area even safer. Uh, but that's where I am on this. So um, we can go for another round of discussion if we want, and or um, we can just take a vote on receiving the report and then move on to the next item. All right. Uh, so. With um, a motion to receive by Mrs. Mahan and a second by Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Hyde? Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Corsi. Oh, I'm sorry. My apologies. Oh. Mr. Corsi recused himself. My apologies. Mr. Hurd. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. It's a 4 0 vote with Mr. DeCorsi recusing himself from the discussion. Thank you. Thank you. So, so should, are we thinking that Mr. Corsi is not gonna be involved in this next item also? Yeah, I think he's, Mr. Okay. Chair. Mr. He, he, uh, Mr. Chair, he just contacted me saying he would continue to recuse himself through item 14. Thank you, appreciate it. And so um, for item 14, uh, let's see, what is it called exactly? Okay, this is discussion, Mass Ave and Appleton MassWorks grant application, once again by Mr. Amstutz. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, so this is, um, yes, related to Mass Ave at Appleton, of course, we have, um, I'll just briefly say that we have uh, retained the services of Stantec Consulting for really looking at this, this project, the long-term bigger picture, um, you know, we're kind of looking at it could be a full sort of reconstruction um, of how to make this the corridor, not simply massive at Appleton, but th this corridor from about Richardson to uh, Quinn Road, um, much safer uh, as there's similar kind of geometric and safety problems at Lowell and Mass Ave and also Forest and Burton and uh, Mass Ave, which came out, I think, pretty strongly through the process of looking at Mass Ave and Appleton through a design review committee. So um, the, uh, you know, the MassWorks grant has to have a kind of housing uh, sort of economic development component to it. And, you know, because of the the um, the 1165R, the, the Myrak property that was uh, permitted, and there's also a, a hotel at the corner of Clark Street and Mass Ave that was permitted, you know, there's definitely activity in the area that we can connect it to um, in order to apply for this grant funding through the state. And we are applying this round in order to see if we can get some funding to, um, uh, we can get some funding for the existing contract with Stantec to finish out the design, but also we, uh, we also need some funding in order to get sort of the next piece of that, which would include the uh, sort of the right of way as well, whatever would be necessary when it you know, comes out of the design. And, um, the, the funding that would be needed for that. So that's actually a, a fairly substantial amount of money that, that we're, uh, we would need about $300,000 is what we'd be asking. And then next year for the next round, once we are at the end of design and have a construction estimate that, and a, you know, something that we're going to build that we would look to try to get some MassWorks funding for um, that construction funding, which we'd know by the end of, um, so at the end of the year. That, that time frame. So uh, this application is due next Friday. And so we're looking for a, a support letter from the board to uh, provide to the state as part of this uh, part of this application. So happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Francis. So I'm going to go to Mr. Helmuth first on this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm happy to move approval for the letter of support. I think it's a very good idea. Um, and um, I don't have any actually specific question. I know some of my colleagues do, so I'd be happy to let them carry some of that. Sure. We'll do hands on this one. Uh, okay, Mr. Mahan. Shocking, I have something to say. Uh, first, I'll second, <laughs> I'll second that. And um, I was wondering, I would like to ask um, through you, Mr. Chair, um, as um, Mr. Amstutz um, to add something to the letter unless um, you advise me that it's not appropriate and or could have a detrimental effect on our application for the um, MassWorks grant that we're seeking here. Um, what I'd like to do is I, I'd like to um, include in there um, in the second paragraph Two, three, fourth line down. Um, if we could include, um, I guess, after bus rider, bicyclists, pedestrians, middle school students, we could highlight that as well as if we could add um, in again in the second paragraph, um, maybe at the very end where it says, um, uh, and brought further light by these local land developments, including Arlington's only, or, or including the Audison Middle School. Um, I'd like to kind of, um, unless you feel that that would be a negative, I'd like to make those two um, amendments. I, I'd be interested in what Mr. Amsitz has to say. Sure, Mr. Amsitz. I don't think that there would be um, any, any, detriment to adding that piece of it. I think we may have mentioned it in um, uh, in another place or another letter, but um, we are we're also cognizant to, to try to connect this to the housing piece. 
So um, certainly the, the existing school is important, but also the, the housing and development that's happening is really critical as part of the, what the state looks for. Right, right. So, yes. um, but it, it, and if you don't want to include actually the audits in middle school, I'd like to just where we're, we're talking about bus riders, pedestrians, drivers, you know. Yes, I think that's fine. Um, school students or something like that. Now I'd like to include the audits in middle school. All right, if you, unless, um, because I understand that, but I just want to make sure, because it has been included in your previous submissions to us for um, other journeys along getting us here. And I just like to be mm -hmm. consistent, especially since um, the Audison students have had such a uh, presence and presented themselves um, at various times in the course of this. So as long as it's not going to hurt the application, um, it, it, I'd like that to be in there. And then, um, for some reason, I'm, I'm, I was, I don't know what I was reading that I think we really have a very good chance of getting um, this funding and it possibly, is it six figure funding or no? Um, yes, Ms. Stances. So the amount we're, we'll be requesting for this round is about $300,000. It's a little, a little bit more than that, 307, I believe. Okay, and I, I know you can't predict that we're going to get it, but for some reason, I just remember reading something that, you know, we've got all our ducks, whatever animal in, the, in a row, and we have a really good chance um, to get this money. If we don't, what happens? Samson. Mr. Uh, maybe Mr. Chapdelaine or oh, yeah. uh, through, you, through you, Mr. Chairman, if for some reason um, we don't receive the 300,000, and I believe we're committing some other funding sources to add to the 300, but if we don't get the 300,000, what happens to the project? Mr. Chapdelaine? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So uh, you are correct, Mrs. Mahan, that there's currently capital budget dollars that are going towards the contract with the designer Stantec that, Stantec that has been hired. If we did not receive this grant, we would have to make a decision about allocating uh, town general fund capital dollars to be able to continue design to the level that would be necessary to achieve construction. Okay, and, and, and like I said, it, and it could be, I'm just along with my colleagues between town meeting, don't get me started, long range planning this morning Mr. DeCourcy and the town manager and I were at, I'm in that same kind of fog. So, um, but like I said, for some reason, reading some things, I think um, nothing's a done deal, but I, I anticipate that we really have a very good shot at that. Um, thanks in large part to what the, our staff in the um, planning department have done uh, to get us along the way and to do, do the studies that need to be done and to um, really fine tune um, exactly what it is um, not only like what we'd like to do in the area, but also I'm appreciative of the fact that there are going to be several major development redevelopments in the area and that the town's endeavoring to um, have this work coincide, um, you know, with the new hotel, with the MIRAC, um, and I'm blanking on what the third one is, um, so, but, um, and I think that helps our application. So thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. And so, and know, I'll second Mr. Um, if it ha I haven't already, I'm losing it. I'll second Mr. Um, Helmut's move approval. All right. Thank you. You know, any other questions, comments? Um, so, yes. Mr. Uh, yeah, just to say that I'm really happy with Ms. Mahan's uh, suggested amendments to the letter. Um, and actually, I had forgotten. So, thank you. I had also noticed. Um, that I think if it doesn't hurt, the, hurt I think mentioning the, the, the Audison um, connection to this um, is, is, is meaningful to us locally. And, uh, but I also am glad to have learned that, you know, that um, mass, the, the, the state will be looking at the need in the light of the, the development, the changes that are coming. So I, you know, all together, you know, we have existing safety needs now, we have uh, many more needs that are becoming because the development that, that's coming there. So, you know, I hope that this will make a very strong application. And I'm, I'm, I appreciate uh, the town manager and his, and his team for being proactive and, and really jumping on this um, so that we can be prepared for those changes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. I mean, yeah, and even though it's um, the 10, 21, 25 I mean, development is outside of the boundaries of the study area, I mean, I mean it will have an impact 
and I'm sure especially if we are going to try to get more people um, cycling and walking in, along that route, especially to to the the heights, you know. So so I'm I'm very supportive of this, I mean, and and I hope you know. Um, um, Ms. Mahan's sense being that we are in good shape for this is, is correct. I mean, so um, with that, it, I will, so it's on a motion to uh, approve the um, application. I mean, uh, so um, with that, in, but I'm sorry, a motion to approve the application by um, Mr. Helmuth and a second by Mr. Mrs. Mahan. Um, I turn to Mr. Hine. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Helen. Yes. Mrs. Mon. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. It's a four zero vote. Mr. DeCourcy recused himself from the deliberations in the vote. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair, could I ask for like four minutes to uh, give us a time to get Mr. DeCourcy back and just to take a quick like four or five minute personal break real quick? I, I was just going to suggest that since we're at the oh, 15, two hour sorry. mark, me. So, 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 yeah. I mean, uh, why don't we, um, why don't we break till till nine twenty? So, like everyone's back, and so we can pick up if everyone's ready. And at item number fourteen, uh, discussion and approval, town wide forum on overnight parking pilot. And so I'll start with this one. You know, so um, Mr. Corsi and I met with um, Chief Flaherty and Officer Ruto uh, to uh, discuss how to possibly move forward with an overnight parking pilot. I mean, initially when we had discussed this, it was in the context of uh, East Arlington uh, overnight parking pilot. And uh, Mr. DeCourcy and I uh, did a forum with the civic engagement group um, with residents meet in uh, I think it was like four precincts in, uh, um, in the East Arlington area. Uh, and Mr. DeCourcy informed me um, afterwards, he, or maybe it was around the same time that he had discussions with um, Officer Toto and, and maybe even um, Chief Flaherty and that Officer Toto had suggested or strongly felt me that this should be uh, a town-wide um, pilot. Since then we've done a, um, hearings mean and we've been involved in town meetings so we just haven't gotten to it so now we're swinging back to it uh, as i said mr corsi and i had a conversation with um, officer tour and chief flaherty officer tour feels strongly um the same way and it's mainly um uh an equity um or uh equity slash quality enforcement issue it uh um it, it will well first off he feels that a one of our parking pilot is good to do in order to see how we can you know, deal with making things more equitable um, and making enforcement being more equitable with respect to um, overnight parking. And secondly, he feels that you know, simply doing it in the East we would miss the fact that there are parts of town outside of the East we, where you know, overnight park parking is an issue um, also. Uh, and so, um, when thinking about how to um, do the forum, uh, he suggests that, uh, well, both he and um, Chief Flaherty suggested that we approach it from the point of view that we are going to do the pilot and getting feedback I mean, from residents on how we do the pilot and, um, and, and also um, get a sense of, of how long to do the pilot. That's all part of how, how to do the pilot. So, so essentially what we are doing is coming to you with this as a proposal um, to see how um, you feel about it. Uh, and so I open it up um, to any of you at, at this point. I mean, I'm not at this point looking um, for I guess I'm not really looking for a motion just yet. I mean, uh, uh, we may need to have one to move forward, but let's just have a discussion at this point. So um, we'll do hands. Or let me refer, back up a little bit and ask my uh, ask Mr. Course to do. Is there anything you want to add to this? What I said. Um, th th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just briefly, and you covered it covered it nicely. I um, I think what Mr. Diggins and I envisioned was after the forum, we would develop a. Um, 
the proposal to bring back to the board for for the parameters of a, of a pilot program and and um so that that after this form took place we would come back to the board and and um make recommendations for the board's the, the full board's consideration but um we have had the discussions and we feel that it is an issue that uh, we need input um from we want to have input from the public on before we uh, come back as a subcommittee, if you will, to the full board. Yeah. And I'll just add one more thing. So at the forum would be myself, Mr. Corsi, and Officer To, and probably uh, Chief Flaherty, high probability Chief Flaherty. And, uh, uh, that makes it not an official meeting. And, but of course, if I would say if any of you wanted to join me, then it would be an official meeting. It'd take on a different tone, I mean, but we're not trying to preclude the involvement uh, by anyone else in the forum. And um, so. So that's it now. Any questions, comments? Yes, this is a hands up situation. Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So just to clarify um, for myself and maybe for anyone else who's watching who maybe hasn't had the benefit of our past discussions, by pilot program, do I take it that, it, well, I guess you're talking about you know, soliciting public forum for how we would do the pilot. I think that's a great idea. Um, is What's the baseline assumption here? Is it that the pilot would be a temporary suspension of the overnight parking ban across all of town? Is that kind of the starting place? Or is that, you know, or is even the nature of that kind of still up for grabs in your in your minds? No, that part I me mean, is pretty settled. I mean that it would be a temporary ban of the overnight parking townwide. Temporary suspension of the ban? Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. Temporary yeah. suspension. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um and then can you describe a little bit more how you what the forum would look like and I think. Um, you know, given, given I think the public will. You know, well, you would, you know, would appreciate some sort of suggestions or some options Are you thinking of like presenting options, A, B and C and D or this kind of thing, or are you just planning on being really open in it just to hear what kind of uh, input there'd be. Um, ideas about the format uh, of the forum that kind of thing. Um, I mean, no strong ideas at this point. I mean, I mean um, Chief Flaherty I mean, offered to buy data regarding I mean, the number of overnight parking tickets that are issued I mean, and other stats that I'm not quite sure I mean, what they would include. I mean, maybe my um, colleague, Mr. DeCourcy, can chime in a little more on that. I mean, uh, uh, at this point, we really haven't thought I mean, a whole lot about the format I mean, mm -hmm. of the of the um, forums, sometimes it's a little hard to go forward um, with these thoughts without getting approval because yeah. because going forward is a little presumptive, you know. Uh, uh, and so, so I mean, but we have thought about the timing of it, and so the timing would be uh, towards the end of June, uh, okay. uh, uh, and and the latest would be July. We really want to get people before they go away um, in August, but but we and also the early thoughts are that if we are going to do the pilot, we'd like to maybe start in August, mid to late August, hmm. and uh, uh, to kind of get that that lull in the summer um, and then capture most of the, well, all the fall. And, and it will depend on how, how long we want to do the pilot to determine hmm. how much of winter we would capture. Uh, yeah, thank you, that, that's really helpful. Um, I think off the cuff, like I said, I think, I think you know, public forum is a good idea. It feels like a really ambitious timeline to me to to prepare a forum that is that we're really well prepared for, so the people can really you know understand what we're asking them to tell us um, in an informed way. Um, you know, I leave it to people who know more than I do who've done more work on this about whether August is realistic to start you know to start this, given that we're looking for a, a time of transition with the town manager, for instance. Um, so, you know, I, I feel cautious about timeline, but I don't feel cautious about doing, uh, about soliciting public input. Um, I'm also open to persuasion on this. My, where I'm at right now is I think I'd want to be there and be able to be, to listen. I think that that's an important message to send to the public, you know, that for something that, that would be such a big change and that we hear all of us as members of the select board hear from people individually, um, a lot about, I certainly do. Um, you know, I think. I like the idea of being able to um, at least be there, if not to participate, but to listen in a, in a recognized capacity. But but you know, I'm not a hill I'm going to die on. But that's just kind of my my bent right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. In case it'd be a formal 
meeting, mm -hmm. you know, and, and with an agenda meeting you know, and maybe maybe meeting slash hearing you know, and and we, we would work it out, you know, mm -hmm. how we do that so that we have as many of you who want to be there as, as possible. Um, yeah, so, thank you very much. Sure. And Ms. Ms. Mahan? <clears throat> Um, I think June is really ambitious, um, especially with town meeting, um, the town meeting of a thousand nights once again, it seems to be, but we'll see how that goes. Um, I, I sort of had in my head that um, maybe the forum was in September. It's a pilot program. You know, we do it six to eight weeks. Uh, October, November, or end of September, middle of November, you know, have a, a defined, or maybe include this as part of the form to say to people, um, you know, pilot program, you know, how long do you think would you recommend us to consider to do this as well as I'd like sort of, uh, I sort of have an option A and B in my mind, um, that it, and maybe we could ask uh, through the town manager's office, I don't know if it would be the planning department, um, and, and I don't see this as a, a cumbersome task, but um, a lot of cities and towns, and I want to say the majority, but I'm just thinking of the communities that are adjacent to Arlington, that do have the um, overnight parking ban lifted once we get to snow plowing weather, um, it no longer exists because um, I know if we go by the honor system saying, you know, it, it's gonna be, well, I'd like to hear input. I'd like to have the, you know, have that discussion at the forum. Um, I'm sure some people may advocate for, we just want it completely eliminated and it's year round and it'll be the honor system to get off when it snows and when we have to do cutbacks and, and stuff like that. But uh, traditionally, I haven't seen that work really work anywhere unless you're talking like out in Amherst. I think they um, do have it. I think that's the town that has it year round. But I think uh, the towns that do have it, but they suspend it and it's posted um, is Watertown. I want to say some of them, but I, 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 I think I'm wrong on that. But so perhaps at the forum, if you could have at least an A and B discussion, which is uh, total overnight parking ban lifted year round uh, versus as well as overnight parking ban just for the non snowplow event months or weeks. Um, and if you can do all this and pull it off in June, that's great. I, I think if you do it in July, I mean, honestly, Arlington, once, you know, last day of school comes in June, uh, a lot of Valentonians really. Um, aren't in town anymore. So I just don't want it to say, hey, you had a forum in July and you know, not much of Arlington was around. So I'll leave it to you, Mr. DeCourcy, to um, come up with the timeline for that. Um, if you want to do it, maybe, you know, the week after school. Um, and then we have over the summer for the town manager and the department heads to sort of have them do their due diligence in terms of A, um, getting ready to, prepare recommendations after we have the forum, what the impact would look like, whether it was a total elimination of overnight parking ban versus if they had any thoughts around, um, especially, uh, well, actually police, fire and public works, because you know when the snow comes, we have snow events, police, maybe not so much police, but definitely fire emergency vehicles, as well as our snow plowing effort. So I, I would just ask that, um, there be at least an A and B discussion, total elim elimination of overnight parking ban, as well as um, parking ban lifted, but re-implemented during the snow plowing event months. And if we could have some data that of the cities and towns that are adjacent to us, that are um, similar in terms of topography and density and all that stuff, um, who, uh, do the same thing. They don't have the year round overnight parking ban. They have, have sort of a seasonal one. So, and I agree with Mr. Helmuth about um, being there. 
I'll leave it there. I'll leave it to Mr. Diggins and, and, and Mr. Hurd. Um, in the past, you know, when I first was on the board, um, the full board would show up at forums and it kind of got us in a lot of trouble. So um, moving forward, uh, like when we did in East Arlington at the Hardy School, you know, we posted as a select board meeting, but really we only have no more than two members of the board that are sort of leading the discussion and, and sort of answering questions or, or whatever, um, and that we just don't deliberate, but just to sort of cover our assets that we do post it as a select board meeting, but um, the, the other three, and I can't tell any of my colleagues what to do or not to do, it's, it's, it's their choice, but um, what's worked in the past is that um, we post it, uh, the full boards there that are members more than two that wanna be there, but we really designate no more, we designate only two members of the board that are gonna lead the meeting and you know answer any questions or, or anything like that. So um, if I could just ask through you, um, Mr. Diggins, uh, to, uh, to Attorney Heim, I'm trying to think if we had a public forum like this when you've been our town council, but I know that's what we've done in the past. Do you see any um, impediments to that or is that something that might work? Mr. Chair? Yes, yes, Mr. Heim. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that's correct, uh, Vice Chair Mahan. Um, generally speaking, if the board is going to um, attend a forum or anything together where you'll be present in a quorum, it's wise to post it as a meeting in an abundance of caution. Uh, because if you discuss a matter within your jurisdiction among a quorum, even if it's part of a large, a larger group, it could be construed as an open meeting. And then, of course, the other way around that is to make sure that you keep your participation to under a quorum. Um, in theory, you could take some risk and say, well, we're not really participating as select board members, uh, but because so many things are under the jurisdiction of the select board and this specific idea and pilot is uh, in your capacity as um, the roadway commissioners and parking commissioners, I think it would be wise to either just notice the select board meeting within the forum or designate some folks so you can keep your participation to under a quorum. Does that address your question, uh, Vice Chair Mahan? Yes, it does. So if, if Mr. DeCourcy, Mr. Diggins are, are, are amenable to this, that, you know, we have the forum, we posted it as a meeting, just to cover us that I read something within the past 18 months where a, a resident not in Arlington made a complaint that um, a quorum, more than a quorum was a, at a meeting. And even though less than a quorum ran the meeting, meaning only two members, that if for some reason one of you were saying something and I nodded my head yes or no, that could be construed as a deliberation or so. Um, and we all know I, I can't keep my hands under control, let alone nodding my head. So um, I think that would be best that um, we, you know, but, but, but we also make it clear that, that this is something that Mr. Diggins and Mr. DeCourcy here are, are, are gonna be the facilitators at and that the board will not be, you know, barring any ca catastrophic event that the town manager says, you know, a, bo a boiler blew up at Stratton and since you're all here tonight, it's notice and you need to vote on it. But um, I don't see that happening. So if we could just, you know, have the forum, just have no more than two members of the board facilitate, definitely post it as a select board meeting but also with the tacit agreement amongst us that the other two, one, two, or three that are there are really just there to listen and there won't be any deliberations. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Mahan. And um, Mr. Hurd? Yep, so I'm happy to have the forum. I think public input on this particular issue is good and, and it can help us frame how we move forward. And this is a point issue that we've been really dealing with over the past couple of years, but it's come kind of full steam in the past few years as we've had a lot of people that have written to us. And as to participation in the forum, given that it takes less time to notice a meeting than we've discussed this tonight, I think let's just notice the meeting. <laughs> All right, thanks. All right, great. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Uh, Mr. Corsi? 
again, I, I appreciate all the comments of, of, of my colleagues and, and I, I agree. Um, it is an ambitious timetable and if it has to be pushed back, it'll be pushed back so that we do it, we do it right and, and um, that, that we hear from people and we um, are able to come back to the, to the full board with, with some sort of recommendation. So, so think of the time frame because I mean, as Ms. Mahan pointed out, I mean, once school is over, I mean, the place kind of gets a little desolate. I mean, so that's why we were aiming for, for June, because if we don't do it in June, I mean, then, then we're doing it in September, Ada. And so the form is September, and then probably we'd be able to start the, the pilot in October. And, uh, I just know that the, um, I guess I was trying to take advantage a little bit in the lull in the pace of activity in town, you know, uh, and I know that to a certain extent means people aren't around, but just kind of staff activity, we need to try and do some planning, you know, in, in July, because you know, generally we hit the ground of um, running pretty hard right after Labor Day, I mean, but we could certainly let people know that's coming, of course, I mean, and try and do as much planning beforehand. And part of that would be in the nature of the presentation, I mean, so that we are telling people, look, we're gonna do this pilot and here are some alternatives. We're looking for your input because we are hoping to start this pilot perhaps in October. And, um, and so I guess what I am really looking for um, from, from you all is, is are we, committed to doing the pilot and, um, and and so so right now I hear that we're committed to doing the forum okay? but because I me mean, what we can do is we can come to people and say we're thinking about doing the pilot and the chief and and officer Rateau advise against that you know um, and you probably can figure out why or we can say we are going to do the pilot and we want your input on how we do the pilot so so can I get a sense as to how um, you're feeling about doing the pilot you know? So I saw it. Pilot. Excuse me. I'm happy to have the pilot. I think yeah, right. it's important ahead of what we have to do for our work. All right. And Ms. Mahan. Um, I I would say right now I can hear Mr. Greeley screaming in my head saying, "For years I asked you to do remote meetings and you waited until I'm not here anymore, and now I can hear him screaming at me." I can't believe for years I've tried to do a pilot program for overnight parking. So I know I can't vote for him, but I can hear him in my on my yeah. shoulder right now. So um, I'm all for doing a pilot, but I would say, you know, a pilot is finite um, yeah. as a start, start and end date. Yeah. So yeah. if we could look at, if we could get some recommendations or see where uh, our department heads, town manager and, and Mr. Diggins and Mr. DeCourcy, um, I my only wish would be that the pilot program end before we anticipate a first snow. So, you know, maybe end before Thanksgiving, you know, so we, maybe it's a six to eight week. And, and by virtue of a pilot program, it's a testing and a, it's, you know, and then after that we can assess um, what's long-term. So, um, so I'm fine for a pilot program if it's a finite amount of time. And if it ends, um, I would say, um, sometime before some days or week before Thanksgiving. I think we're okay with snow up until then. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, thank you, Ms. Mahan. And um, Mr. Helmuth? Well, far be it for me to disagree with the voice of Mr. Greeley. Um, I think, um, yeah, I'm all right with it. You know, I think that an extended pilot, you know, I don't know how much time, uh, we'll figure out how long, how long it is. You know, I think at some point with the pilot program, you do run into the, can we get this genie back in the bottle uh, kind of thing. You know, I think that, you know, if it goes on long, long enough, it could be, it could really be perceived as the change itself. And so I think cl clear communication and messaging will be ob obviously, you know, really important to the public about, about what we're doing. And that really is, you know, provisional that we really are, are, uh, are doing what we're doing. So, you know, I think, I think in principle, that's fine. Um, I, I'll just leave it at that. So thank you. Okay. All right. You um, know, so now it's just really a matter of whether we go for the um, end of June or or in September. I mean, and I think I'll have a conversation with Mr. Morsi about that. I hear what you're saying about it being ambitious. You know, um, and I think if we are going to try and do a pilot, perhaps end of September, I mean, um, through a, um, 
middle of, uh, of November. I mean, then if we had a, a forum right at the beginning of September with all the details pretty much worked out and giving people kind of a choice and some some in chance to feedback, you know, then we could launch it. But that would require I me mean, some some work during the summer that I know we can pull off. I mean, so I'll, I'll have a conversation with Mr. Corsi about this, I mean, and we'll update you um, in a meeting in June, probably the first one in June. Um, Mrs. Corsi? No, th th thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and again, appreciate the comments of my colleagues. And I think one of the important areas that we will have to discuss is, is, is duration, because you know we have heard different things and it certainly does have to be finite. And I think that will be, um, I'm hearing consensus on, on a certain period, but it may be other uh, options that we, that we need to present. And, and it's understood that there may not be consensus right now on that period, but we'll need input and, and, and need to come back uh, on that and, and try to develop consensus. But I, I, I think this is really helpful. Great, great, yeah, yeah, so um, thank you, I agree. I mean, so um, like I said, I don't, we, we didn't need to vote, we just need to really get a sense of how you felt about things and really just kind of get, get approval. We got it, you know, so. Moving on uh, to the next item, I mean, future select board meetings. And, and so this isn't so much to plan out meetings for July. I mean, um, let's plan on maybe doing that in, at our next meeting is really to kind of lay out in the thinking about um, where to meet. Uh, and so uh, in the message I was trying to convey regarding tonight's meeting, essentially what I was trying to say uh, and didn't come out clearly is that hey, I was willing to be at town hall, uh, regardless of who wanted to be there. I mean, um, and so if it's just one other select board person, you know, I, I would be there. I mean, my feelings mean about masking is that I'm wearing a mask, you know, when I'm in a room with someone else. You know, I mean, my my notion is that the we don't know I mean, when we are contagious. I mean, we can be asymptomatic and contagious, you know, uh, and the test, I mean, there's just lots of false negatives in the testing. So when I heard that people were concerned about testing, I thought, well, we have to kind of work out how we're going to work, deal with the testing. I mean, it's like, I mean, uh, when are you tested? I mean, and, and I mean, I would imagine you'd have to be tested enough time in advance so that you can stay home, you know, um, if you know that you're positive, you know, and so, I just put this out there. I mean, like I said, I am willing to come to town hall I mean, for just one other person, you know, uh, and I'm willing to do all the meetings that way if you want, you know. But like I said, the things just kind of got, I thought, a little muddled and it was just easier to just go, let's do this one all remote, have a discussion about how we want to approach meetings and take it from there, I man. And so I've said what I have to say. This is a hands up situation. Oh, hmm. Oh, quite. Not. <laughs> so, so, Ms. Mahat. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just feel like I'm always raising my hand. I don't want to be overhanded. Uh -huh. Um, Just if I had my druthers, um, and I understand what you're saying, you know, we need to have enough time if we do test positive, but um, I, I'd like to when we came to the last meeting um, under the tutelage of the town manager, you know, I tested right there in the office before. <laughs> you froze up on us. Hmm. I think we lost you. How do, How do you we do this? And you got me to. Uh, Hold on a second. We're, right. we're, yeah, we lost you for a little bit there. So. Uh, you said under the tutelage of the town manager, you tested right in, in the office right before we came in. Yeah. But um, if people aren't comfortable with that and they want to just do the honor system and say literally they tested um, right before they came to the select board meeting, not, I mean, I'd be willing to do it at home too. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm fine coming in. Um, but, you know, I think just for all our sake that, that you know, um, we test within an hour of the meeting whether it's at the chambers or not, um, or we continue with remote. I'm fine either way, but 
if, if we do go back in person, um, uh, I'd like to, and I don't know if there's any board of health recommended, but I don't think there is. I don't think people have to test. Yeah. Well, the employees do, but anyways, whatever the board of health would recommend, if we do come back and meet as a full board or close to a full board in the chambers, um, my own personal, I'd like some testing to be there if we are coming back, or if it's just better to be, because I understand what you're saying about false positives, you know, and, um, but now I'm, and, you know, so far, I don't want to jinx myself to say about COVID and if it's infiltrated my family or not. Um, so I'm okay with just staying with remote. So I'm, I'd be happy to um, hear with the rest of my co or, you know, maybe do remote if we do uh, the July or August mission goals forum meeting, which also is a select board meeting. Um, you know, we have it somewhere that we can really be spaced, you know, not in the chambers, somewhere else in town hall that we can really space out from each other if we're going to be in the same room for up to three hours. So maybe well, that other hearing room named after one of my former colleagues who I don't want to say the name. Okay, okay. bye. So, so just as we talk about I mean, the testing, I have this question. So is the testing I mean done so that we don't have to wear masks? And um, is that the rationale for doing the testing? And so no, no, no. I, I just like to um, do that. And like, like if I came to a select board meeting, we're meeting in person, do the testing, but I see that the positivity rate's really high. Um, I'm definitely wearing a mask, even if I test negative. Um, and, you know, and, and, and not just for COVID. <laughs> Who knows what else is going to be coming down the line, you know, and I'm not saying the other one that there's only 100 cases being watched in the United States, but, you know, uh, I don't know if it was already said at this meeting or I think maybe the town manager and Mr. DeCourcy and I were discussing it this morning at the Long Range Planning Committee, but somebody was saying at the meeting that they were saying with COVID, invariably, everybody's going to get it. <laughs> in some form or another. So just that's why I want to be a little extra paranoid. So testing right. and mask. All right. You know, so um, Mr. Hurd. So I'm fine if people want to test. I, I mean, I think we all trust each other. So if someone tells me that they want me to test before a meeting, I think it's a little easier to test at home than to start showing a inside of our nose to our colleagues in the select board chamber um i do think it's i mean i think people know where i am on this i find zoom meetings to be excruciating and i have migraines by the end of the night um i think it's important for us to try to the best we can get back to our normal meetings which run much more efficiently and i think i mean the board of health has right in the state of massachusetts has regulations and people can choose to wear masks and not choose to wear masks per their preference. And I think that's just how we would respect what happens inside the chamber is people can choose to do whatever they are within the confines of local regulations. So um, again, I think it's important step for us to get back into the chamber and I think it sends a good message to the residents of Arlington. And I just think that's why how this board was meant to operate. So my vote would be to be in the chamber and I am certainly fine with the testing requirement if that's what my colleagues prefer. Anyone else? Is it hurt? I mean, sorry, Mr. Helms. The other Mr. Hurt. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I look at risk reduction as additive. Right, so rapid testing, you know, which the most of the experts that I read, and I'm not one of them, you know, suggest that it's, you know, many of them believe it's pretty good to detect active, active transmissibility. It's not perfect. Nothing's perfect. That's why we like an additive risk reduction strategy. Um, masking, air filtering, you know, in the select board chambers has a really high quality HEPA uh, filter machine. You know, again, the more of those layers that you add, you know, the, the better off we are. Um, I think personally, I would be willing to go, you know, to consider going back in. Uh, I do, I would appreciate, you know, if we can send rapid test kits 
to our homes and tell them can do that. Um, doing a test that day or, or that evening um, would be, again, an additive layer, not a perfect layer. Um, I might choose myself to wear a mask depending on our, our level of transmission as indicated by the BioBot wastewater data, by the CDC recommendations, by our Board of Health um, uh, assessment of the situation. You know, I'll point out that right now we're in a high level of transmission. And, you know, I'm personally glad that we decided to do town meeting in person because I know a lot of town meeting members who couldn't be in town hall because they have COVID or they're in COVID jail. So I think it's difficult to make a blank for myself to make a blanket statement about my comfort without taking into account what we know, limited though it is, about the transmission rate. And it varies, it changes over time. So how I feel now may be, I may feel differently in the summer if the rates go back down. And you know, my personal view is that we have to, we do have to grapple with COVID as a reality, but it's not a monolithic reality. It changes over time. You know, and I think we have to learn how to adapt um, our approach and our rules and our, and our practices um, for different levels of transmission. I think that's just the new normal. So um, there's no perfect way. I'm very respectful of, of people having different personal standards of risk very, you know, perfectly fine with that, but I know that we need to corporately, you know, grab, you know, come together with something that, that for me is, is an intersection of the consideration of the level of transmission as best it can, as it can be known, um, what layers of additive risk reduction that we can employ and that we can collectively agree upon. Um, so, you know, I think it's a long way of saying that I'm pretty much where Ms. Bond is, I think, um, with that, um, you know, right now it's been easy to, to just meet remotely because town meetings are remote, you know, but, but I also agree with Mr. You know, Mr. Hurd, I would prefer to be in the chamber as well, you know, for a, generally speaking for a lot of reasons. So I'm certainly willing to, to work towards that. That's kind of, those are the, the, the different things I think about. All right, Mr. Corsi. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And um, yeah, my, my preference is to be in the chambers and I'm certainly happy to, to have same day testing, but I agree with Mr. Helmut there. there are, there are going to be instances where you may, we may have a meeting scheduled in person where it, it's going to be more appropriate to do it remotely um, because the transmission rates. And, and I also think we have to consider staffing as, as well because we, we've had issues with that in terms of would we be able to staff a meeting if we had it in person? So I think that's a consideration beyond the five of us, but, but assuming that the transmission rates are, are, are at a level. My preference is, is to be in the chambers um, it, it, as well. And, and I think the testing, for me, I'd rather do it at home um, because if I get a positive, I don't wanna be around everybody uh, either. And, and uh, you know, we're all gonna report if, if, if we have that positive. So um, that, that's where I am on that. But I think we need to, can, to be flexible depending uh, if conditions change. I hear. Well, you know, I need to perhaps talk with um, Ms. Malloy, you know, and the town manager, I mean, to come up with something general um, in terms of how we handle testing and masking. And you know, uh, my inclination right now is to say, do what I was gonna do uh, for this meeting. That is to say, I will be there. Anyone else who wants to be there, you're welcome to come. However, tested, untested, masked, unmasked, whoever doesn't want to be there, that's fine too. Don't need a reason, you know. Uh, uh, and so that's kind of my default, you know. Uh, like I said, I, I, I will talk with Mr. Malloy and the town manager to see, maybe even uh, Mr. Heim to just see what kind of general thing uh, we can do. Because right now, I mean, where my attention is, is that I'm respecting what the Board of Health says, uh, but at the same time, it, um, I'm also dealing with my interpretation of the science, you know, um, and I tend to be, uh, I hate, to, I say conservative I mean, when I talk about this virus way too much, you know, uh, but, but I am. Uh, and so, uh, so, so there we are. I mean, so, okay, I think we've talked about this enough at this point. And, and I don't say that out of exasperation. I mean, in fact, when you, you see out of exasperation emotionally towards you all, it's more that my energy is just running out and we have um, more to do. So, so I'm gonna move on in, uh, and, and um, move to correspondence received. Um, and so I'll turn to Mr. Corsi on this one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I, I'll move receipt of the, the correspondence and I know 
this was an issue that uh, Mr. Helmuth had, had worked on uh, or had raised previously with the board, but um, uh, move received at this point. Right, and let me just specify, is traffic concerns at the intersection of Wachusett Avenue and Appleton Street. You know, so thank you for that uh, motion to receive. Um, and I'll do a hands up on this. Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, second that, um, with a request uh, to the town manager that, uh, you know, because I did hear from a, uh, quite a few residents at that intersection in, uh, I think it was December and I brought it to the board. Um, I appreciate the memo very much. I'm delighted to see the plans and the progress and then, you know, the plan to refer to TAC for a project, which was our motion at the time. Um, I, I would ask if the town manager could arrange for the appropriate staff to reach out to the residents and I can provide their information with kind of an update and maybe an invitation um, to, to, be, to have some awareness of the, of the tentative plan uh, that was drawn up. Um, you know, the, the, it started with one resident back in 2020. So, I mean, that's good, but in, uh, quite a few have gotten in touch with us. So if we could kind of close the loop with them, I think they'd appreciate that and just deeply appreciate knowing that it's, that it's now kind of the wheels are moving. So, um, is, that, is that reasonable, Mr. Chaplain? Is that, am I asking? Yes. yes. Doable? Sure. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Great. All right. Um, any other comments, questions? Okay, so on uh, a motion to receive by Mr. Corsi and a second by Mr. Helmuth, uh, Mr. Time. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Corsi? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Ma? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Thank you. And so um, next on the agenda, new business. And um, I'll, I'll go down the line on this one. Um, Hi. No, no business. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Mr. Captain Lane? Uh, thank you, Mr. Diggins. Just uh, very uh, two quick pieces of new business. One, the board is aware of one of slight breaking. Um, wanted to celebrate the good work of the planning department and the engineering division submitting a shared streets grant application, which was awarded for Chestnut in Mystic in the amount of, I think, approximately $150,000, which will go a long way to implement the project improvements in that area. And then just late today, I learned that DPW had also applied for a separate sort of parallel but separate lane of that same shared streets program. And they received $50,000 to buy a snow, a piece of snow removal equipment sidewalks. So um, sort of cross departments utilizing, um, utilizing state fundings that are available to make the town better and both have been awarded. So good news to share. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mr. Chapter Lane. Uh, and Mr. Helmuth. Congratulations to your team, Mr. Chapter Lane. That's excellent news. Um, no new business for me. Thank you, and Mr. Scorsi. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just uh, two quick items. Um, first of all, I, uh, it, it, you know, we appointed Dr. White to the Board of Health this evening, and I'm sure she will be a great addition to the board. Um, she's replacing Ken Kohlberg, who had served several terms on the Board of Health. And I'd like to ask the town manager if he could send a letter of thanks to Mr. Kohlberg for his years of service on the Board of Health. Um, Second point, um, it's getting to tournament time at the for high school athletics. And I just want to briefly mention two teams that often offer, uh, not, not really in the, in the spotlight, but uh, uh, given recent events, certainly a deserving of mention. And that's the girls and boys tennis team at Arlington High School. And the girls just wrapped up their season with a record of 16 and four. They've been in the Middlesex League for over a decade. And this year for the very first time, they defeated Winchester in tennis. And, and oftentimes when the Arlington High girls tennis team is playing Winchester, you measure it by how long you're on the court, whether not whether you're winning or losing. And, and they were uh, successful. They had one of the best records in the Middlesex League and, and they're moving on. So I congratulate coach Danielle Rakowski and the girls team. Also want to congratulate coach Matt Siegel of the boys team. Uh, they have uh, made the tournament as well with a record of 13 and seven. And it's a, uh, the Liberty League in the Middlesex League, within the Middlesex League, um, is a very difficult and very competitive um, division for, for tennis. And, and both teams made it to the tournament. And I want to wish them well, as well as all other teams from Arlington High School and Arlington Catholic that have made the tournament. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Corsi. Um, is it Heim? I'm sorry. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Ms. Mahan. Or you can call me Mr. Grayley. I'll answer to either. Um, oh. I, I know uh, our Director of Veterans Affairs, 
Chef Chango has um, events uh, planned for, for May 30th. Um, I'll definitely have a conversation with the chairman because um, there is a proclamation, but I'm kind of hoping it's going to be a surprise to the recipient. So I'll check with Attorney Heim the right way. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll get, I have the proclamation right here right now, but I'll um, uh, get it to the chairman. Uh, for Monday, May 30th's events. Um, and, and we'll go from there, because I, I think, uh, depending on, I know it's Memorial Day weekend um, of, of who can attend, um, but I know um, several of us will be there, so. Um, and then the only other thing is, I just wanna say, um, and I've had conversations with Attorney Heim about this, um, the really good news from EPA, they uh, came out and uh, they sent uh, a letter to uh, City of Cambridge, City of Somerville, MWRA, and Department of Conservation and Recreation, DCR, um, with everything that the town of Arlington, uh, through Save the Owl Life and Mr. River Watershed, Charles River Watershed, um, all um, along with the town, the town manager, attorney Heim, um, and sporadically myself um, have been attending meetings and they're now making it requirements um, uh, and, and pretty much have addressed everything. The, uh, uh, one of the, the points that used to get thrown back to Arlington is, you know, you're not addressing your INO program. Well, guess what we are, you know, with our own funding, with opera funding, so that's no longer an issue. Um, so what, what's in there is dredging um, the Alwife Brook and or uh, sort of a, eliminating it as a channel, um, put, uh, developing a plan. I'm not saying this is you know, gonna happen overnight, but de developing a plan to eliminate the CSOs. And the reason they're bringing DCR in, which um, Dan Driscoll is the person over at DCR who heads and spearheads this. And, he and I have bucked heads for about 20 years. We don't get along. So if you want anything from Dan and Driscoll, don't say you know me. But uh, one of the sticking points when he decided to do the Greenway and encourage kayaks and canoes and uh, launches for them to go into the Alwife was that I said, DCR really should be responsible for it before you're encouraging people to go into sometimes sewage infested waters with the CSO discharge. Um, you have to at least a notify them of that, which he always refused to do, and the town would put signs up. But b work towards cleaning it up, and, and EPA has now added them on. Um, and what I'd like to do is, and I've had a conversation with Attorney Heim about this, but I definitely want, in thinking about it, um, I'd like to sort of submit a draft to the board, um, sort of codifying what the EPA has uh, come out with. Um, you know, thanking the EPA for that, you know, we still stand firm in our commitment for uh, all we're asking for is a plan. Um, and, uh, and then hopefully, not hopefully, with the plan, you know, what the time implementation steps would be, um, and then continue on to the ultimate goal of um, total elimination of the CSOs and really having EPA you know, definitely Mystic River Watershed, but more importantly, you know, Charles River um, Watershed um, and the other one that I'm blanking on uh, is, is really good news for Arlington in getting this done. And when I first started on this journey, um, I had said to them, you know, I would like to see from Cambridge, some of will see us, um, MWRA, a plan in total elimination by 2050. And they all said, well, yeah, that, that's something we can do. But right now we have to plan for what's going to get done for 2025. Well, now 2050 seems to be the number <laughs> to shoot for anyway. So anyway, so I'm, I'm going to work with Attorney Heim and as well as if there's any other entity like Conservation Commission or whoever else um, that should send our planning department a separate letter to EPA. I really want to just keep the heat on to keep this moving. Um, and whether it's a joint letter or a separate letter, that's fine, but I'll, I'll have conversations with the town manager and town council, get something up in a draft, um, 
circulate it to my colleagues so you can see it beforehand, maybe discuss it at a select board meeting and then see if um, the board's comfortable with um, sending that communication um, on to EPA with CC as they did, uh, Cambridge Summerall, MWRA, DCR. And that's it for my new business. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Mahan. And then my quick new business is that um, 13 floors open, reopen um, in East Arlington. There was a fire at Thrive. And um, this was sometime last year, maybe about a year ago. Uh, and and um, it affected them. And, and they had nothing but good things to say about the way the town helped them out. I mean, the town helped them find a temporary location and, um, with um, Food Lake. And, and it was very supportive. And, and, and so uh, I just wanted to pass that along, I mean, so they're back in and, and, and I'm pleased to hear that Aiden and Tom did, did well by them. So, so um, with that, we are going to adjourn this meeting and then head into executive um, session. So I'm going to turn to Mrs. Mahan for the, the motion. Okay, and I, I just want clarification. Um, uh, if, in executive session, we do approve the release of any minutes. Is that something we're going to come out and vote on in public session, or is that something that we'll put on the next agenda and vote on the release of those minutes at a public agenda in the future? And well, um, let's let's come out and and release them. And uh, so so yeah, let's make a motion that allows us to come out. And release them so that we can not have to worry about this on another agenda. And so, was that a clear answer, Mrs. Bond? Um, Mr. Heim? Mr. Chairman? Yes. I think if the board approves minutes for release in the executive session, it doesn't have to come out. I think if you want to make a motion to go into executive session, you should decide whether or not you want to adjourn from executive session. But I think you vote in the executive session to approve and release minutes. That'll be all you need. You don't necessarily need to come back come back out so just to okay then maybe get some, say some votes. Right. i'd like to move that we uh go into executive session to comply with um the approval and or release of some if not all executive session minutes as noted in our agenda as well as to conduct, conduct a strategy session in preparation for contract negotiations with non-union personnel sandy pooler applicant for town manager pursuant interim town manager pursuant to section 12B of the Manager Act and or conduct contract negotiations with same and that when we adjourn, we will adjourn in executive session. Okay, got a second from someone? Second. Second, okay, so on a motion from Mrs. Mahan to go into executive session and um, a, a, a motion by Mr. Mahan to go to check the session, a second from Mr. Helmuth, Mr. Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Helen? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. And, and I'm sorry, just to confirm, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Chair we're, we're not going to, we're going to adjourn from executive session, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, so I we're guess. Executive session. Thank you. Adjourn.